What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Blindside Blitz. I am Jim McPhee, and of course, alongside of me is Mr. Joe DeCapita. What's going on, Blitz Nation? Welcome back again. You are here for your latest dose of NFL info, and we're here to bring it to you. Not only just us, but our friends at Grumblings Media. Head over to grumblingsmedia.com. You can check out the latest and greatest political entertainment and sports podcasts available. That's right. One-stop shop. Just go there, take a look at what you like there, head over to YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, hit the share button, share it to all your family fr and friends. That's what it's all about, Jim. Winners it's don't use Sharing drugs. is caring. <laughs> We're here to share info with you guys, NFL-wise, and can't wait to dive into it. Uh, you can also uh, follow on Rumble.com as well as anywhere you, you, you get podcasts, yeah. Apple, Google, Spotify, Joe. and Pandora. It's week one, man. It's here. Finally. finally. It has finally come upon us here. It's Joe. finally here. It, it is great, but it is also sad because summer is over. You know, kids ah, are going back okay. to school and all that stuff, but the NFL season it is fall. here. Uh, and my birthday is on Sunday, so i got a lot of games right. to watch on my birthday. It's going to be pretty crazy. So or you'll be busy be nice doing housework. Or yeah, I'll be just very busy doing other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it would be uh, very interesting, though. It'll be a lot of fun. I uh, can't wait. There's a lot of different matchups, a lot of exciting matchups that they have lined up here. I know the uh, guys who set the schedule together uh, worked real hard and might have a lot of good matchups here uh, mm. moving forward. Uh, so it's going to be fun to look at. Um, so right now, you know, some of the, the news is still that's captivating. We're just going to go through a different things, a lot of different things. We have uh, a really action-packed show for you guys tonight we're gonna have a lot of fun uh but uh, let's just cover it as quick um the J jamar chase thing again now he's still got his hold in going you know showing up to practice still but you know not dressed in uniform and all that stuff and people still having a big issue with this i don't uh, know why uh, which is funny because <laughs> that's where I, I wanted to bring it up because i know we don't really have an issue with this so we're not going to be on this for a very long time but i think it's funny that um, I was even listening to Sirius, uh, Sirius XM today in, in the NFL channel there, and they were even debating this whole thing and saying, you know, this is crazy, um, debating the leverage that, you know, Jamar Chase, that he doesn't have any because, again, he's got a few more years on his deal still. So what's the deal? And then the Bengals, uh, we talked about this uh, with, with some form, with some guests that we've had on too, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Um about you know the Bengals don't exactly like to pay either and things like that, um, but first of all, I, I get your take on it, and then I'll tell you what I what I think about this. So, you know, but uh, the Jamar Chase thing, it's mm -hmm. going to come to a close pretty soon, right? Hundred percent. Like I, I don't know why people are getting so upset over this. Like I understand Bengals fans out there, are, they're just pissed because he's not in uniform, he's not practicing with the team, right. and the uncertainty, right? It's it's mostly the uncertainty. Of is he going to play week one or not? Like is he going to hold out into the season? You know, and and I'll I'll tell you this right now. The word that we're hearing out of Cincinnati is that it's very close. It's, very it's close. not like it's far apart, right. and they're still kind of hammering out numbers and clauses and what have you. But it's close. Like th the deal's going to get done. It's going to get done before week one. Before it even gets here. Like I understand the the clock is ticking. We're we're now we're in the week leading up to kickoff for the Bengals, but I, I got to believe that I, I can't see it any other way. Like the, the deal is going to get done. And let's just say worst case scenario, it doesn't get done. I think Jamar Chase is still going to play. Like I think this whole holding in whatever you want to call it, he wasn't showing up to the facility for quite some time. So it was a holdout. Mm -hmm. And then lately in the last, Eh, roughly four days or so now he's reporting to to the facilities now he's showing up because in preparation of whenever the deal does get agreed to he's just there to sign and then and let's play ball so Bengals fans fantasy football fans that drafted jamar chase calm down like it, it it's going to be fine he's going to play this season and he's gonna help the Bengals get to where they end up like 
let's just stop worrying about it because it, listen, the Niner fans, they were the other fan base that was up in a roar. I'm like, Oh, is Ayuk going to come? Are we going to trade him away? Like what's going to happen with Debo? What's going to happen with Trent Williams? Is he going to show up? Look, look what just happened it, this in the, in the past couple of days, Trent Williams gets a new deal. Boom. He's coming up. He's, he's heading to the facility, right? Brandon Ayuk deal got done. They weren't going to let him leave. They weren't going to trade him. John Lynch himself said over and over and over to reporters, no, we're not trading him. You're out of your mind. So they locked up all those players that that uh, fan bases or the Niners fans were worried about and, and see what happened. Yes. Is it closer than you'd like it to be? Sure. But this Jamar Chase thing, it's going to get ironed out. It's going to get done. And then you have the, the Jets situation with Hassan Reddick, and people are worried about that. That's what you should be worried about mm -hmm. because Hassan Reddick, it doesn't seem like they are close at all to, you know, ironing out w whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Like he's under contract, but now he wants more money. And, and it seems like he may, he may be the only big name player that's going to hold out as, as we get to week one kickoff. And who knows? Maybe right the day before kickoff, maybe Saturday, they finally get that that deal done too between the Jets and him. So, yes, Jamar Chase, guys, <laughs> let's just calm down. It, it, it'll get done. Yeah, Ian Rappaport has been saying this. That's why I think it's funny because he's like the NFL insider, right? And then the fact that the NFL, him and Schefter, uh, they're, yeah. they're they're they're. Uh, I know, but mainly Schefter is like ESPN, like the NFL's guy is like Ian Rappaport. It's funny that they, you know on their radio station that they were sure what was going on when the whole time he's tweeting stuff like hey they're close on the thing and it's that it's potentially he could be uh the highest paid wide receiver it's in the nfl right now yeah uh, i had seen different scenarios that showed him getting uh highest uh average per year um and then also mm -hmm. highest bonus money but not the biggest contract you know guaranteed what's going to end so, up happening is jamar chase because this is a him and justin jefferson were homies yeah they, all, they both went to lsu so all chase said that he wanted was a penny more just a penny there more <laughs> just to say just to say that i got a bigger contract than you uh, it, nice. it's it's one of those things between friends so let's see we'll wait and see if that happens i think it's gonna happen like you can't be that upset. If you're an NFL fan, you can't be that upset if, in fact, the Bengals give him and just edge out Justin Jefferson's contract because they're both great players. Now, yeah, you can argue and debate who you think is the best, but they're both great players. They're both elite talents. So we'll see how, how it all shakes out, but... He's going to be there week yeah, one. Yeah, he's going to be there. Everybody keep your pants on. There's a few more days here. You know what I mean? So they got time Yeah, uh, before it shows up. And they're only paying the, playing the Patriots or anything like that, too. So it's going to be crazy. Like, they on. should start their backup <laughs> quarterback, just like the Patriots did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. We'll get to that in, in just a little bit. Uh, so all right, next up on the docket, we've got this thing we've decided to look at. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's take a look at some quarterbacks here. Now that you even brought up even Jacoby Brissett or That's somebody. That's right. Um, that are now going to be in the starting spot here uh, that have the most to prove. What quarterbacks are out there that have the most to prove this year? It's not even like on a prove it deal, mm -hmm. but I think really need to show something to keep themselves either in the league or, you know, a keep, starter. Get, get, yeah, or become <laughs> a starter and get something there. Right. Um, I think one obvious okay. uh, one is Russell Wilson. Russell yeah. Wilson, 36 years old, uh, named the starter there in Pittsburgh. Um, still only on this one year deal now here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, so he's looking to just extend his career now, show you that it wasn't just a fluke of what he did last year, even though a lot of people still Had dogging him. Uh, saying, you know, this year. is you know, having no faith at all. I again, I was listening uh to to X Sirius XM today, yeah, and that's what I mean. You get two different scenarios, you get oh, a guy, really? people who were. You know, they think, you know, Russell Wilson and can do something where they saw what he did last year. Team Wilson. And then you got the and then uh, you got the ones that are like, no, there. he's just not going to do anything. It is, <laughs> this is a pipe dream. Uh, move on. You know, but uh, in the argument against it, I think is what is Justin Fields really shown either. You know what I mean? In his career, right. he's had really ups and downs, too. So mm -hmm. uh, if the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking to win now, which Mike Tomlin, I think, really has to look that way and say, hey, I need to win now still because, you know, uh, I want to remain the head coach here and I'm doing whatever it takes to get 
you know, my team to to win. Right. Uh, you know, so I think Russell Wilson gives them the best option. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and this is something that we've said from day one when Russell Wilson signed and then they traded for Justin Fields shortly after everyone's like, oh, well, legitimate quarterback, you know, showdown like no. <laughs> Russell Wilson was never going to sign with the Steelers if they said, hey, we, we'd like to we'd like for you to be our quarterback, but we're also going to trade for Justin and, and you guys can duke it out. No, he would have never signed with Pittsburgh if that was the case. So, of course, he was he was told, hey, Russ, you're the starter. We're going to still trade for Justin Fields. We're going to say it's a quarterback competition, but you're our guy. Like, that's really the conversation that was had. Otherwise, why would Russell Wilson risk not being the starter and sitting out a year or maybe even having to ask for a trade because it didn't work out for him? So, of course, he wanted to cement that. He got the starting job. Now he, just like you said, Jim, like now he has to prove like, hey, I understand it was a different offense in Denver, different personnel, all that kind of jazz. But you did, you did good, kid. You did good, Wilson. You mm -hmm. did good. Now mm -hmm. just show people that it's not just a one and done year. Now show that you are consistent still, you know, in your career. You can still get the job done. So and he only signed a one-year deal, so that actually will, will if he has a good year, he doesn't have to have a great year, but if he has another good year, that shows other teams that are quarterback needy, they might be lining up in free agency for his services. Mm -hmm. You know Exactly, and, and that's then, where you extend your career either way if it's not with right. Pittsburgh. And it doesn't stop there because then if Pittsburgh sees that and like, <sighs> what do we do? Do we re-sign Fields and make him our starter now? Or... Because Russ had such a good year, do we lock him up and then <laughs> let's just let's just see what we can get for Fields in the trade? <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like, there's a couple different scenarios that could shake out, but that's I agree with you. That's definitely one of the quarterbacks. Not necessarily he, he doesn't have to prove something. It's just that he has to prove consistency really for this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another one for me is mm -hmm. got to be another obvious one: Daniel Jones. Uh, Daniel yeah. Jones right there. Right. And what's funny is, is Daniel Jones is easy to dog, I think, too. Um, because we they don't, yeah. But if you look at even records, what last year um, they were one in five, which is terrible, but he only was able to start in six games. So mm -hmm. he had a really putrid year last year, but banged up really offensive line, not doing very well. We've seen that Evan Neal is not the guy, you know, and right tackle. Um, so he had only you know, two touchdowns and six turnovers last year, but what be <laughs> the year before 15 uh, touchdowns to five ratio, 67%, still 3,200 yards, which isn't bad, I think. Uh, and then the year prior, just, you know, 10 uh, touchdowns to seven picks. And then you're finally getting back to where he was um, putting up some better numbers like he was his first season. So, you're just hoping that he can stay healthy. So he only had really one full season healthy, and that was uh, a year ago before last year. So two years ago, 2022. So his main thing is really, one, stay healthy. Two, mm. just get back to doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? You know, get the ball out there. Uh, rely on, uh, you, you know, you're running game a little bit. I mean, but kind of settle in on this offense. And I think the, the fact that Brian Dable – has taken over the playing calling duties. Thank God. I think only helps Daniel Jones Thank moving God. forward. Yeah, that, um, that's when Mike he Kafka's was successful. offense was not good at all. And then, like I said, it was concentrated on the deep ball way too much and not enough underneath guys when you kind of had those types of guys underneath that can get you that yak. Yeah, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that. Matt Kafka, like what are you thinking when you didn't have receivers, when you didn't have an offensive line to protect Daniel Jones, but you're you still no attacking time. down the yes. field? Yeah. Like you don't have time for him to sit in the pocket and throw the ball accurately because he's already running for his life. Mm -hmm. Like that right there just goes to show you like he, he was such – he just – he was much like the Saints' old offensive coordinator. Like just absolutely terrible in, in, in game situations, poor decision-making mm -hmm. in terms of plays. And we'll just throw him in there with Josh McDaniels too. Why not? Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, he, here's the thing with, with Daniel Jones is, does he make bonehead mistakes still? Yes, it's a given. And that's something that has to change. Otherwise, he will be gone. 
mm-hmm. because he might he, he definitely has talent. It's you can see it from time to time and time again. Once in a while, you, you see an accurate throw being made, like right on point. You know what I mean? Where he steps into a throw, he, he just kind of has that nice release, and he does throw a nice ball. Yes. And 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 then he can connect and throw into these tight windows at times. Yes. And you're like, that's the guy that we've been waiting for. And then the very next play, he'll start to get feel pressure. He'll escape the pressure and then go to throw a ball, and he throws it to the linebacker for a pick. And it's, right. it makes you, it baffles you. So Daniel Jones has to be more consistent this year. And thank God that the Giants put a lot of emphasis on shoring up that offensive line this offseason and getting him a legit weapon, at least one. Malik Neighbors is the real deal. I don't think you have to wait to title him and say, oh, well, let's wait and see he's a rookie. No, this rookie is one of the best. In the in the last five years of, of wide receivers, this dude is going to be right up there. So I can't wait to see the the neighbors and, and Jones show because it's coming. And, and and we've had people on the show before is telling us don't sleep on the Giants this year. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, you might be able to poke fun of about them with their offensive line like Swiss cheese and Daniel Jones and his terrible decision making, but there it seems like this offseason they're getting back to the giant way they're getting back to big blue football and I can't wait to see with with Brian Dayball calling the plays finally because that's the last time Daniel Jones was successful as a quarterback finally he's calling the plays they shored up that offensive line and got him a couple weapons now let's put it together on the football field and see what Daniel Jones can do because honestly this is make or break year for Daniel Jones he's had a lot of opportunity and yes you're right Jim Yes, it wasn't glamorous. He didn't have a really good offensive line pretty much his whole career. His whole career. Receivers were uh, were lackluster. um, Offenses, too, he's had to learn. Right. I mean, that's a lot of quarterbacks, too. But but my thing is, is now you have the you have the ingredients for this recipe for the upcoming season. Let's see if he can cook. Yep, absolutely. And then, you know, the guaranteed money has been paid too to him. So I mean, there's you know, there's gonna be a cap hit if they do cut him mm-hmm. uh pre June first. I don't uh, think they'll cut him. But um yeah, no, I mean might as well keep him on there too, if they just do, to have him in the back. If they do, it'll be after June. Yes. It'll be a post June first cut and they'll be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, with the with the pressure and it has the most to show too. I mean, he's hearing the fact, you know, we saw it on you know, the the uh, hard knocks that you know the Giants did look at you know drake may you know what i mean they were they're really considering they were trying uh, trying to get they drake tried may. to get so, i mean knowing that you know they didn't want you know you at the, at that point during the uh the draft you know that shows you something and that kind of gives you that chip that sometimes hey, these guys need prove it to us mm-hmm. prove it to us listen if the giants could pull that trade off to move up a couple spots to get drake may they would have mm-hmm. we all know that's a fact that wasn't just a rumor that was a fact and now because they couldn't they're like, we're going to rock with Daniel Jones and, tr- and make the best of it. Because I'll tell you right now, if they even got Drake May, it would have been it would have been a legit quarterback competition. Mm-hmm. And you never know how those things will shake out. So uh, Daniel Jones, now that he's seen that the Giants are fully prepared to move on from him, if he doesn't you know, show up and, and, and play a quarterback to the level that they need him to play, it, this could be his last year as a Giant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one other guy I was thinking too, uh, mm-hmm. just because of the situation that he's in and, um, the team that he's on, you know, mm-hmm. and that's going to be the Minnesota Vikings and Sam Darnold, okay. Sam Darnold, again, not too many starts consistently with, a you know, the teams that he's been on, but he's been on a lot of bad teams. Uh, so overall his, his stats aren't the best, you know, but he's been moved around, like I said, on really bad teams. So he has bad the opportunity situations. to be the starter now for the Minnesota Vikings with JJ McCarthy out, you know, for the season. So now he's guaranteed the spot. Uh, so it's time for him to shine again. So he's on a very minimal deal here, uh, with the, with the Vikings. So just like with Baker Mayfield with the, you know, the, the Rams and, mm-hmm. and, and the, the bucks last year, really, um, 
an opportunity to show that what he, what he can do and showing that maybe he's turned the page a little bit, you know, eliminated uh, some of those mistakes that he had the turnovers that were costly. Um, and it's a pretty good team to be behind here too. So, I mean, and, and uh, with, with the uh, head coach too, I mean, you're in a great situation uh, for Sam Darnold. So you could see potentially, um, a revamping of Sam Darnold, much like you saw kind of with Geno Smith with the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. And, and it, this is one of my favorite, like comeback player of the comeback player of the year. Like, I, I think he's one of my favorites this year. I think he's going to get it done and he's going to surprise a lot of people. This is why Minnesota, when they signed him, Kevin O'Connell in his offense, he, 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 Kevin O'Connell basically said this quarterback fits my offense extremely well. Now we just got to get him to learn the playbook. He goes, I've seen his arm. I've seen his accuracy. I've seen how he can handle himself in the pocket. He's pretty poised. And he goes, that's all we need for this offense to work. And when you have Aaron Jones in the backfield, that helps. When you have right. Justin Jefferson to throw the ball to, when you have Jordan Addison to throw the ball to, yeah. like you're in good hands with those weapons. Right. Like so, And their offensive line is actually pretty solid. Some people yes. were, were kind of picking on them yeah, last, last season, but... They're pretty solid. So Sam Darnold, for the first time, I think this is the best team he's ever going to start for. You look at back when he was with the Jets originally, that Jets team was not built to win at all. Mm -hmm. Their offensive line was terrible. Their receiving weapons weren't the greatest. You know, they had Corey Davis back then in the day and, and um, like Michael Carter as a running back, like nothing really flashy, nothing really, you know, potential that could grow into something. And then what did the Jets do after three years? It's your fault, Sam. You didn't play well enough. It's all you. It's not everybody around you. It's just you. You're the problem. Get rid of him. He goes to Carolina for a couple years. And I'll, I'm going to be honest. There was one year where they were 5-0 and in the beginning of the season. Like, they were killing it with Sam Darnold. Mm -hmm. And then he get, came down with an injury. Ended his season. Then he, he goes to free agency. After a couple of years, finds his way to San Fran, ends up being a backup with the 49ers. And I thought that was an excellent signing by the Niners. If anything was to happen to Brock Purdy, Darnold comes in. I think Darnold would have done an adequate job. I'm not saying he would have done a better job than Purdy at all, but he would have done an adequate job just enough. Now he finds himself in Minnesota. And I'll tell you right now, finally, he not only has a team around him that's legit, but also. He has a coaching staff that truly does believe in him. They, they believe in him. They have all the confidence in the world with him. And I think that's something that was missing his whole career whenever he started for a team. So now he finally has that part. He has the, the support. He has the weapons now. He has a decent offense around him. I'm excited to see what Sam Darnold could do this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I mean, it'd be interesting to see here with Minnesota what what happens all together because again, I know right? last year. I mean, they were just banged up a lot. Uh, so and they still were I would like to see. Yeah, I would like to see what what they do this season. Um, do you have anybody else in mind on your end? I got a few guys. What do you I got? got? A few guys. Bryce Young from Carolina. We just talked about the yes. Carolina team. Yes. Might as well stick with that. Bryce Sounds Young uh, needs to prove to me because I I'm going to be honest with with y'all. I was not the biggest fan of Bryce Young when he came out in the draft. I wasn't at all. I didn't think, even though the hype was all there, um, everybody said that he was a slam dunk, safe pick. You take him. You don't have to worry about quarterback for the next 10 years. I didn't buy it. I thought he was too short in stature, which that shouldn't matter, but it does at the NFL level. When you got freaking six, nine offensive linemen, you got to be able to see your targets. You got to be able to make the throws. Not only that, but Bryce Young in his slender frame, I was worried about him getting injured, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And he got hit a lot last year. Mm -hmm. He was one of the most hit quarterbacks last season. It was insane. And his offensive line didn't help. <laughs> they, they played poorly too last year. So I think Bryce Young for me, I don't, I'm not expecting him. I just need to see some kind of progression. I need to see something to where that gives me confidence. If you're a Panthers fan out there, or even the coaching staff or the, the front office, they got to see something from you. You got to show some kind of level of consistency. You got to show something that this is the reason why you drafted me because I can make things happen. Because if we don't see that much like Daniel Jones, I know Bryce Young's only been there, you know, for a for year. A season, yeah. So 
and and it's kind of like a knee jerk reaction in a in a sense. But dude, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything why you drafted him the first quarterback. You know what 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 was the reason? Well, I didn't see any. I, I didn't see anything. I saw him running around. I saw him making poor decisions, uh, turning the ball over, all negative stuff that you don't want your starting quarterback to do. So yeah, Bryce Young, I need to see more from you this season. Right, Joe, and uh, you and I have talked about this extensively, even about about Alabama quarterbacks coming out and things yeah. like that, and not really yeah. having a lot of success. Success, success. success I got gotcha. you. Such a hard word to say, Joe. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, having uh, so much you know trouble with success in the NFL, mm-hmm. and right now, at least at this point, two has got to be the outlier. You know, out of them all, you know what I mean? Which mm-hmm. a lot of people are, again, still skeptical, thinking that it's kind of smoke and mirrors right now with Tua. Uh, somebody we had on the show, so I think in the comments last week, had said something yeah. about it. Right. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, and this is what we kind of seen in, in the Nick Saban's offenses, you know, they're, they're like the old type of smash mouth football and stuff, but the quarterbacks haven't really panned out in the, when it comes down to the NFL. And Bryce Young, like you said, undersized, things like that, it does make a difference. Um, mm-hmm. And what you really want to do is eliminate the turnovers because that's what the thing is. Yeah. You lost a turnover game very uh, poorly last se- season. He had uh, 11 uh, touchdowns and 10 interceptions, uh, only throwing 59% to um, all together, though. We looked at that team. It was just a bad team, though, too, because we we'd also talked right. about what changes were they making to make the team better. And I think they did on the interior side, but again, it, what weapons? You didn't really have a lot of weapons and things like that. So they look to try and do that this season to try and help him out. Mm-hmm. But like you said, when you're picked that that early and and things, and you're expected to High do expectations a lot, exactly, that puts the pressure on you, and it, you yep. need that pressure there to perform. So uh, I agree with you too uh, with this one, Bryce Young. I think I know, has to show something. Right, here. I know it's early. Like for Bryce Young, because he's only had right. one year. Not, I get it. On a but year. man, for being picked that high and there wasn't too many highlights, you know, we'll just leave it at that. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, do you have any more? You, I, got, I, I got a couple more. Go ahead. Do a couple. And then I've got one that might okay. be a little questionable, but I think some people are thinking it. OK, so Derek Carr for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm not blaming him. Right. But I know the Saints fandom is. I, I know that they're coming down hard on the, Derek the Carr. Time is uh, and honestly, after watching last season mm-hmm. and how poor the, the offensive play calling was and 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 Derek Carr was getting frustrated with some of the receivers. Chris Alave was one of them where they just weren't running the routes. They were half half ass running and they weren't finishing the routes to because he he would throw it up for him to get a chance to catch it and run. And he stopped running and then the ball goes sailing over his head and everyone's like, Oh, he overthrew him. No, no dude stopped running this route. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here's the thing is like, I do believe in Derek Carr. I think he's, I think he is and can be like, he isn't, he isn't right now, but he can be a top 10 quarterback in this league. We've seen evidence of it in the past with the Raiders where there really wasn't much there. And he's still, carried the team on his back to the playoffs when he only had Hunter Renfro as a receiver really that year. Everybody was banged up then. Right. But this guy last year with the Saints threw for just over 3,800 passing yards, had 25 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Oh, by the way, had a QBR of 97.7. Pretty Mm -hmm. good freaking numbers. Yep. So why are you coming down on him now this year? You have a new offensive coordinator, new offense. And I think this is the year where Derek Carr is going to show everybody and, and rightfully so, right? Like you got to prove yourself to stay with the Saints. Because if he has a, I will say this, if he has a mediocre year or a poor year, I really do think the Saints will just move on from him. I think they will move on from him and say, okay, well, we thought this was this experiment was going to work and it just didn't. So Derek Carr's got to prove to the organization and to the fans that that he is the guy for the long term. Yeah, I mean, I can agree with you uh, to an extent. Like I was looking at him too as well. Uh, but again, if they if they if it doesn't work out for him, if he doesn't show them that they can do something here, I think there's a bunch of different changes here. Because uh, we had also seen um, in I head think, coach will be fired. Head coach, exactly. Yeah, Dennis Allen will be gone. I don't know how he's um, still there. Honestly, Alvin Kamara will be out. 
Yeah, he's already, oh, that. he's already, he already sold his house. I sold his house. Yeah. He yeah, sold his house yeah. in New Orleans. So that tells you right there that he's looking forward to free agency. Yes. He does not want to stay in New Orleans. Right. Right. Yep. And again, you know, Cam Jordan, you know, he's, he's old in the tooth. He'll be on his way out probably too. Dude, uh, and that's so. the crazy thing is that this team is always in cap purgatory yeah. every year. They always are way mm -hmm. over the cap. They at some point they gotta get stay under. They gotta stay low with their with their financials. And and you're right, Cameron Jordan, like that dude's getting paid. Was it something like thirty plus million or something mm -hmm. crazy like something. that? Um, but where's the production that matches that contract? I don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. I, you and me, Jim, like we talked about this in the off season about hey maybe possible cuts. Cameron Jordan was one of those guys where like, we don't see the same production, just like Demarcus Lawrence with the Cowboys, same thing, getting a lot of money, but where's the production from that? And, and we're not seeing it. So yeah, I, I mean, th there's definitely going to be changes in, in, in New Orleans. Right. And I mean, you talk about just pressure for himself, but it's kind of pressure for the team. Like mm -hmm. you said, you know, it's, it's not exactly just, you know, pressure for him to perform for what he's got to do to keep his job or, or, you know, uh, right. potentially try out for another team right. after this moving forward. But if they don't do well, like I said, you know, the head coach is gone, gone, multiple players gone. Uh, you're talking about reset button because also in, in the in the backfield, too, you've got, you know, Honey Badger, who's super old, too. I mean, you're, you're going to see a lot of these older guys just want to out, just move on or, or yeah. do something else. So and the other uh, the other part, it of, all matters. Right. The other part of this quarterback situation, too, is the fact that they drafted Spencer Rattler. Yes. And Jake Hayner. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Jake Hayner, we don't foresee him being a starter, but. Spencer Rattler is kind of like the, the hot, spicy topic right. now in New Orleans. Like, yeah. Oh, well, you know, could he be the starter for us? You know, it depends on how Derek Carr plays this year because mm -hmm. the Saints might have been thinking that all along. Like, hey, listen, we're going to take a, a quarterback that was going to be a top-end quarterback but then went th through some troubles in college, dropped him down in the rounds, for this upcoming draft, we're going to take him. We're going to work with him. We're going to develop him. And if he shows enough for, to us that he could be our starter and Derek Carr seems to struggle a little bit this year, then maybe we do get out of this contract and move on from Carr and insert Rattler. So they do already have an insurance policy. Spencer Rattler is going to learn under Derek Carr this year. And who knows if it's a bad year, Rattler probably gets an opportunity. The last few games right. gets thrown in there to see what he can do. And uh, we'll see how that, that all shakes out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Who else you got? I got Kirk Cousins. Ooh. And the reason why I'll okay. say Kirk Cousins, I love Kirk Cousins. I think he's a really good quarterback in this league uh, and all that. But he is coming. He is older. He is coming back from a major injury, you know, and you're with a new team. So, like, those three situations, usually it, it doesn't spell out success for, for an aging quarterback. Now you're in Atlanta. You have some nice young weapons to throw to, and I think he's going to do really good. I really do. But he's got to prove to everybody across the NFL because he hasn't done it yet. He hasn't taken a team and not only make the playoffs, but win in the playoffs. Push into the playoffs because I'll tell you right now, Atlanta Falcons, when they brought the, the instant they brought and signed Kirk Cousins to the squad, they were basically making a statement in the NFC saying, we're right here to compete for the playoffs. We're going to compete against everybody here. We didn't take it easy and say, well, we're not going to spend the money on a quarterback. We're going to draft one. They ended up with Michael Penix anyway, mm -hmm. but they signed Kirk Cousins because that tells me like they believe that they are in win now mode in the NFC. So now Kirk Cousins, you got yet again, pressure on you coming in. You better perform at a high level and help this team get to the postseason. Because anything less than postseason, I feel like, is a failure now because of this move. So Kirk Cousins got to prove that not only can he win in the big games under the lights, you know, maybe win a round or two if you're lucky in the, in the NFC playoffs, you got to prove to everybody that you're not just a guy who, I'll get you 10 wins, 11 wins, 12 wins, and that's about it every year and not go anywhere. So Kirk Cousins, you got to prove it to everybody. Right. And lately with him though, too, it's been even stay healthy. Um, but you got to definitely up an upgrade at quarterback from what you had, you know, like you said, you're, you're uh, trying an upgrade. To, yeah. You got a freaking like, 
You just bought, you just bought the like, market. Uh, yeah, a Cadillac, right? <laughs> you know, and you had you know, a Pinto, right? Uh, and why do you get a guy like Kirk Cousins? Because he doesn't do dumb stuff and turn the ball over when he's not supposed to. You know, things like that, which what was Unless happening with, with Desmond Ritter. Uh, uh, so that's what we expect. And like you said, mm -hmm. you don't go and get a Kirk Cousins unless you think you can win now. Right. And, you know, it, that's what this team, I think, really thought. They had a chance. Um, there was even a time you know, when they were in games uh, that they, they, I think, were competing for the division. Uh, it just if they, yeah. if they just had that quarterback, uh, um, it would have helped them get past, um, the, the, you know, the, that echelon where they needed to go. Yeah, not named Desmond Ritter. Right. <laughs> Arthur, right. Hey, by the way, everyone, hey, Arthur, Smith Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith as your office was the, the guy calling the plays in Atlanta with Desmond Ritter. That was his boy, mm -hmm. and it just really it was a disaster. So right. they right. did, and you're right, they did foul up a few games mm -hmm. that could have propelled them into the playoffs. And now you look at with this Kirk Cousins signing, you look at Justin Simmons signing a, a veteran safety to kind of, you know facilitate and, and and add to that secondary that that's a dangerous yes. secondary now yes. so you're seeing them pick you know pick pieces sign pieces draft pieces to win because Matt yes. Judon they traded for too to, yes because they haven't had a pass rusher in like eons right so now they finally have a legit pass rusher and they and you're seeing all these pieces being added to this roster now it's like now you look at that team and you're like whoa this is a team that can compete this year. So Kirk Cousins, again, I, I think that he has to prove that just to your point, Jim, yes. he has to prove to stay healthy Yes, and come back from that injury and prove to people that, listen, I'm not just the guy to be above average. Uh, I'm trying to take this team over the hump. So we'll right. see. I agree. I agree. We'll see. All right. Well, see you guys. I got else? one more guy. Sure. This is you're going to be have fun with this one. Okay. Deshaun Watson. And okay. and honestly, this is kind of one of the slam dunk ones for, to <laughs> yeah. me because yeah. we talk about injuries. We talk about not being available. Mm -hmm. uh, best ability is availability. And this guy hasn't shown that either. So and I love Deshaun Watson. I still believe that he can be the the Watson that we're used to in with Houston Texans in his prime. I still think he has that in him. I still I saw flashes of it uh, beginning of last year. When they went five and one, that offense was kind of humming. And then he went down again with an injury. And you're like, if you're a Cleveland fan, you're, you're, you're slamming your head against the wall being like, we, we gave this guy how much. And he's always getting injured and, and he's not helping us get anywhere. So Deshaun Watson this year and this year only just like maybe Derek Carr, just like maybe, you know, Bryce young, this might be your last season to prove to the, the Browns fans, to the organization that you deserve to be there. Right. Because you can't, you cannot afford to be injured and not be able to play again. You just can't. Yes. Because I got a feeling that this, this Browns front office is going to start to have some negative feelings about this. And if you go down again, they're going to get fed up and say, you know what? I don't care what the penalty is. We got to move on from this guy. We, we need to go find our future. Or, you know, maybe in the draft this upcoming year or or maybe even uh, maybe even if Russell Wilson has a good year and then maybe this could be a team in the forefront to get Russell Wilson services next season. So Deshaun Watson, you got to prove to everybody, not only can you stay healthy, but you need to show people the reason why you have this big contract as a starting quarterback in this league. Yeah, and I wasn't sure because I was looking at Deshaun Watson. I'm like, do I do this because of the injury and stuff? Well, I, I'm not sure. But then uh, it's not again, just that. No, it's not because look at if you look at you know his stats again, his stat line. He did only play six games uh, last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. uh, he was three and three two years prior, but still seven touchdowns to five interceptions. So the interception to touchdown ratio is, is terrible. You're ter so the games that you did able to, were able to play in. Half the time you're throwing interceptions to what you're scoring a touchdown on. So I mean you're just about the same. You're just about the same. Yeah, that's not good production here. So when you're even out there, when you're healthy, you're not doing anything to help the team. Last year, now behind that great defense that they had, mm -hmm. which they're going to have again this season, uh, he went five and one despite seven touchdowns and four interceptions again, and mm -hmm. throwing at sixty percent. 61% year before is 58%. So again, not that completion playing, percentage completion percentage. Yes. Uh, not 
performing well. Still, this one last year, again, winning despite being terrible. So it does not, not just show that, you know, healthy is one thing, but when you're out there and you are healthy, you're playing terrible. So you do need to get somewhere near what you were. We're not asking for the 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions where you had your last, you know, MVP style, 2020. you know, yes, 2020, but something better than, than what you're doing. We'll accept, you know, the 19 and eight, you know, that you were in your rookie season, something like that, something that you're not harming, harming your team that badly to where you can actually, what, what's worse is that you, you've got that contract. So that hovers over you like a so storm cloud right there that everybody just has to go to and say, what are we paying this guy for? If he's mm. trash, he's garbage. He's not helping the team. You're relying on defense. You might as well get Sam Darnold and things like that because it's the same numbers. Here's what I'll say. I'll say, unlike Jim, I'm going to, yes, I do expect you to return back to the Houston days because that's how good you were in your prime. You're still young. You're still capable of that. So, yeah, I do expect 30-plus touchdowns. I do expect single-digit interceptions. And I expect the the the, uh, the 112 QBR rating. Um, and, and I will say this: like the first year in Cleveland, that was a that wasn't going to go well anyway, because he just came back, hasn't played football in two years, and and, and now you're going to throw him into the starting lineup, hoping he's going to be like the guy in the in his prime. No, mm -hmm. so that was a throwaway year. But but last season, the six games he played, like. The stats don't show it, but I don't, I, I honestly like to go five and one with the team. And that and it is much attributed to the defense a hundred percent. Like, yes. because when you look at the stats with throwing seven touchdowns and four interceptions, you're like, dude, what the hell? But what's weird is that 84.3 QBR rating that he had was better than this first time around. So it, it does show you that he's getting better and getting back into the swing of things, but you'd really like to see those stats a little inflated a little bit more. And I, even though I know it's only six games that he played, but this year he's got to play all the games. And I want to see no more than nine picks. I want to see no more than nine picks. I want to see 25 to 30 touchdown passes and the, the Browns fans deserve it. Deshaun Watson, you need to prove to everybody that you not only deserve the contract you're given, but you need to prove to the organization and everyone alike, like, hey, I'm back and, and I'm here to stay. All right. We've got back to the Stone Age. Ooh, Ooh, Mr. Stone, Stone Age. Age. Mr. Stone Age. Is who you guys. That's right. right. Uh, yo, Blitzman, uh, for <laughs> breaking the quarterback market with 230 million guaranteed and all those first rounders, Wat, uh, Watson needs to be. Uh, Brady plus or else he'll forever be a bum of uh, questionable manliness. Oh, man. Oh, I don't wow. think so. You don't That's have rough. to be Tom Brady. You just have to be Deshaun Watson. Like what people remember. Yeah. Like if you can do that and be one of those top end quarterbacks like you were in the league once before, you're good. You're good. I mean, you look at contracts now. We, we just talked about Jordan Love getting his new deal after one year of production. One. And you're getting big time money like that. So Deshaun Watson has a little bit of a track record when he was with Houston. We're just, everybody's waiting on Watson to wake up and, and, and return to something like it. Doesn't have to be exactly like it, but you got to show something. You got to show that you're worthy of any, any amount of money at this yeah, point, yeah. because you could find yourself out, not, out, not just out of Cleveland, but if you don't have a good enough season and, and Cleveland moves on from you, I don't know what team's going to give you another shot now. Yeah. I mean, put it this way. Look how if the team wasn't winning last season, I mean, we probably would be talking about this even more and then the focus would be on it more, you know, uh, look at what happened with the Broncos. Like we said, Russell Wilson had pretty good numbers and everybody's dogging him and, you know, how, how he played like garbage, you know? So it's all perspective, especially which whatever t way the team flows, uh, and luckily for him, he had the defense to, to help him out here, but he can't be one of those quarterbacks that rides the coattails when we were brought in to be a game changer and take this, this team to a championship. And you've come very short of that. All right. So, uh, for me, if you don't have any more, I got one more, go for it. Uh, it's going to be out of the ordinary, but, uh, ordinary. I think, um, there is a narrative for it. 
Okay. All right. And I'm going to say Brock Purdy. What? <laughs> um, but but hear me out on this one. Because I know there's a lot I'm of waiting. Brock Purdy haters, right? He's still technically got, what, this year and the next year on his contract. So next year, he'll be looking for another contract, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got to perform this year because, again, Yes, he's been able to take his team to the playoffs. The first season, uh, he was knocked out early you know, due to injury. Uh, but still, even that season, even though he posted up a 67 completion percentage, uh, 13 touchdowns of four INTs, um, you know, last year with all the weapons that he had to stay in healthy, 31 touchdowns and 11 picks looked very nice. But I still, a lot of people saying that he's just a system quarterback. He's got all these weapons around him. If you give anybody. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, plus this defense that he has, uh, you know, you could give it to anybody and they'll look like a superstar. So I think he needs to prove to people again this season that it's not a mirage. He needs to keep it going. And then also for his big payday next season, which what's that going to be? We've seen the 49ers kind of go back and forth with all these contracts this last couple of seasons here. Uh, you know, you know, dibble and dabble was running out to the last possible minute. How are they going to see Brock Purdy? Are they going to be one of those franchises that says, oh, Brock Purdy, yeah, we've had this success because of you. We're going to give you make you the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But the way they've been showing things the last, you know, this season is offseason, even with like a Brandon Ayuk. Um, I think they debated a little bit and see, well, you know, I don't know about highest paid, but what about this? No, I you're gonna have to expect the highest paid. You're gonna have to. It's what the quarter, it's what about the market is. And then we've already seen that. Did Tua deserve the contract that he got? Honestly, for a guy that has a ton of concussions, that scares the crap out of me to give him a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And they did because that's what the market is. Jordan Love, you had one year of great, it was great production. Don't get me wrong, but one year. And you're getting top end money. So it's like whatever the market dictates, that's that's the new routine in the NFL. Whatever position you're playing, what is the market? All right, we got to pay him somewhere around that range. And when Brock Purdy is, is ready to collect, I can only imagine what this is going to look like. So Brock Purdy, pr pretty darn successful as a quarterback. And, yeah. and th there's a lot of haters out there, but I don't understand where the hate's coming from. You know what I mean? Because the guy has tremendous stats. He, him as a rookie through 13 and had four picks, 107.3 yeah. QBR rating. The completion yeah. percentage to me is skewed. Yes. Because yes, yes. that stat has to do with your receivers. Yes. Sometimes the receivers bounce off their hands and then it turns into a pick. Sometimes they just flat out drop it. You know what I mean? So um, that stat is kind of like it's it's in flux. It's not, you know, as as stone cold as right. you'd like it to be. And then right. this past year, which I don't understand where all the hate was coming from guy threw for over 4,200 yards, yeah. 31 touchdowns, 11 picks and a QBR of 113. Yeah. This guy was killing it. And for people to say, well, it's because you got all these weapons. It's because you got a great offensive line. Does that help? Yes. But you could say that about any really good quarterback. Look at Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick yep. Mahomes has one of the better offensive lines minus his tackles, but yes. And look at all the weapons he has now. Yeah, there's not, he doesn't have like a true number one wide receiver like a Jefferson or a Chase, but he's that's who Travis Kelce is to him. Yep, yep. He's his number one in a different mold. And then the referees are number two. And that's right. And then they help him. But that's anyway, right. but like you got Rashi Rice, who's who's kind of been a pleasant surprise for the Chiefs. You know, they're hoping that Xavier Worthy this year is going to be that next, you know, deep threat for them and not drop the football. Uh, so if you're going to nitpick on Brock Purdy, who had a phenomenal year and honestly mm -hmm. MVP year, mm -hmm. then you better start knocking Patrick Mahomes because every, everybody wants to say you want to knock on Purdy. You better knock on other people too, that have the same situation. He's got pretty good weapons. They, they don't have huge names other than Travis Kels. But you got pretty good solid offensive line. You look at the Eagles with Jalen Hurts, you better start knocking Jalen Hurts now because why? Oh, he's got Devonta Smith. He's got A.J. Brown. He's got a great old line. Where does it stop? Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. These quarterbacks like Purdy, he's getting it done. So he deserves the accolades. He mm -hmm. deserves the praise.
Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it's sad that, and I understand there's like some of those fans that like, no matter what a, per, a player does, yeah. they're going to hate them. Yep. But like, come on now. Yeah, Guy's a good why, qu- he's like, a really good quarterback. Yeah. That's why. I mean, I figured I'd play devil's advocate in that one uh, again, because he's going to be up for a contract too. So I think, um, to silence the haters, you know, he's got to do it because you also look at the 49ers and where they are and how many times they've made it to the championship game and then the Super Kyle Bowl. As well. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, if we weren't doing quarterbacks, we could do coaches, uh, oh, maybe we'll God. do that, uh, you know, next week or something. But uh, so yeah, I mean, so there you go. There's there's the quarterbacks we talked about who had the most approved this season, right? Uh, we left a couple off again because, um, Again, it's all perspective. I think of how you look at it. Other guys always have something to prove. Yeah. Did you have um, any? Did you have any more? Just I didn't to bring up? have any more. Okay. But I mean, obviously, if you wanted to look at a couple, you could talk about guys that have, you know. But I don't like to follow the narrative that way and kind no. of you know beat that horse to death. I gotcha. Like with like the Lamar Jackson because that's what they're asking him now. No. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you've made it to that's the playoffs stupid. and you keep yeah, losing. Yeah. Oh, you know, no. You know, and Lamar, just keep running. I was thinking maybe (laughs) Joe Burrow again, too, just because, again, pressure to stay healthy and and get back there because we've seen that team make it to the AFC championship a few times. But Mm -hmm. we've also seen them lose to a lot of teams where they should have beat and just kind of have a sluggish start. So that's mm. why I'm kind of unsure how this team's going to start off this season. I think they'll too, be fine uh, if they have that sluggish start again. Uh, but you know, I was going to leave him well, off too. You well, know you know what? I mean? so. It's crazy about that Bengals team. Is like, look at the division they play in. So if you start yeah. off against two of those divisional opponents and you lose both, can you really say that it's a bad beginning of the season? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all four of those teams are playoff contenders. Yeah. So it, it's going to be difficult. You know what I mean? Now, do you think under those guidelines, do you think mm. Tua has something to prove this year to people? Because again, you, like you said, you still got those haters who think he's no. got the noodle arm no, and no. you know he, he doesn't fit the offense. The, the noodle way it arm is thing, and Listen, things like that. We can talk about Bo Nix with noodle arm. Yeah, we can. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the strongest arm in the NFL, but you don't need the strongest arm in the NFL. You don't need to throw 70, 60 yards. You yeah. don't. Mm-hmm. But if you can throw 50 to 60, and accurately that's more than what you need like you you don't have to okay so like perfect example right patrick mahomes has one of the strongest arms in the nfl when he had tyree kill they got away with a lot because he could throw it 70 yards so when the when the defensive coverage said oh they're not going to throw it this far they stopped following tyree kill hill kept running yeah and then he caught a 70 yard bomb Mm -hmm. so but that's with a strong arm quarterback you don't need to do that. You just need to be able to be accurate and smart and make the right decisions. So like Bo Nix, who, who's going to end up, he throws comfortably 50 to 60, comfortably. Mm-hmm. He strain, when, when he strains and tries to throw it 65 and try to get it out there, that's when it gets erratic, inaccurate, and, and, it, and it's and a lot of times short. So, but you don't need to throw a 55-yard bomb. You, you, you know what I mean? He can hit the 50 yarder, no problem, but you're going to throw it 35, 40 yards. And as long as your receiver's beating the, the corner, that, that's all you really need. Mm-hmm. So, for everybody with the whole strong arm, weak arm, that type of thing, two has already proven to us with this offense that he's in with Mike McDaniels. Like, this offense fits Tua to a T because it utilizes the short, intermediate game, but with a lot of speed around him. And that offense works for him. You know, so it, it so it's like it does coincide with the offense that you're in and what kind of style quarterback you are. Mm-hmm. So Tua, when he first got drafted, everybody called him Noodle Arm. He sucks and this, that, and the other thing. And he didn't have good years because I feel like the offense didn't fit him. But now you're looking at this cr- very creative offense, and it's working out amazing. So I don't think Tua has to prove anything. He's already mm-hmm. done that. Mm-hmm. He just has to prove to me that, you know, is he going to wear a guardian cap or not? Yeah, that, Well, that's something to talk about. That can cause the different con- things. That the sucks amount of, for real. I feel like guys like Tua, guys that have had uh, multiple concussions, like Hunter Renfro, he's another one. And maybe that could be a reason why he hasn't signed with a team. Maybe teams are concerned. You know what I mean? If he gets another concussion, then uh, could be could be bad. Uh, but guys like Tua 
are they going to take the extra precaution and wear that guardian cap over a, over a really good helmet? Yeah, especially if it um, you know helps keep your career going again to where you know if that's that's everything. If you lose that, you're done. I you mean, know? I know Tua is going to look like a bobblehead. With and that they kind of feel there. that they feel like it does make your head a little top heavy and stuff like that. But I think it's so I think it's light, though, like they're yeah. so light still that that because now they're making helmets like they 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 can withstand a tremendous amount of impact, mm -hmm. but they're making them feel like the, like the material they use. is like it's like super featherly light. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's incredible what they're doing there. Uh, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt. A little extra protection oh, for guys like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. If if guys that are, are are you know prone to concussions, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they do to help the longevity of their career. Like, especially after they get paid, they're like, "Well, I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to wear this." You know what I mean? <laughs> Why not? I don't care. And right. I think that would help in a step forward for youth to 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 uh, start to wear it. Um, I was reading an article uh, yesterday. Yeah. About uh, a couple more high schoolers uh, just lost their lives. Oh, geez, um, really? Because of yep, uh, you know, brain damage, things like that, getting oh, getting man. hit in the head, and um, not you know, and, and in practices, they uh, if you what you find is there's not a lot of guardian cap use uh, and availability to uh, schools. Well, which it costs is kind money. Of crazy, it does. That's the thing is so costs money. Uh, I think something that uh, everybody should look forward into trying to do, um, and maybe wrap up in the the school taxes or whatever, hey. whatever state. Hey. somebody can get things together and help funding, but we need to, if you guys want football still and you want to protect these kids, you need to uh, help get them the best equipment, like the guardian caps and things like that. How about because, this? I mean, how about, how about this? protect their lives? How about the NFL step up? Yeah, that's the NFL. Too. The NFL is all about safety and, and NFL youth and all, and all they have all these camps and everything. NFL, like I'm not saying the NFL has to buy guardian caps for every single school across the nation. But what I'm saying is, Maybe do a little bit every year. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the first hundred part of their camps or the something. Fir or the first hundred schools every single year, boom, we're going to supply you with 20, yeah. 20 guardian caps each. You know what I mean? So, um, and then there's got to be like charities and stuff to like maybe kind of chip in or whatever. Yeah. You even have like a bake sale at your school or something to raise money that maybe you can buy a few. You know what I mean? To, to help your team out. Yeah. So. Cause they even said it was only certain positions for the NFL that had to wear them during practice in preseason uh, a year ago. And then this mm. season, it's everybody. like everybody. Yeah. And they said the difference in, 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 uh, you know, concussions was drastic. So, you know, the, the amount that there was, there was the, like, I, mean, I, I think it was close to 50% less or something like that. And yeah. They said it was a, a significant amount. And if you're talking about NFL players, mm -hmm. why aren't we doing this for our children? And I think that's oh, something that needs to get to I move agree. forward. I mean, on, and, and that's probably camps. something that's going to kind of build up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But yeah, but I, I agree. Like, it, that's the thing is it, it is, it is about safety, especially for the kids. It, it's more, don't want to make it say that, like it's any less important for adults, but it is a little bit more important when you have kids involved because they're still, de their bodies are, developing, are still so. developing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want to protect them health wise. So, yeah, it'd be cool. Like if there's some kind of thing that maybe the NFL can do to kind of like raise money, even if it's a fundraiser that the NFL puts on mm -hmm. and raise millions of dollars to every single year to listen, they're making a lot of money. Yeah, they're making more money than I thought they made. Yeah. Honestly, like yeah, it, right. it was a few years it's a non -profit, ago. Joe. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it, it is a few years ago. Yeah, it's a nonprofit where the head guy makes freaking millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. Uh, but. But like for, for the NFL, like they used to make years ago, they used to make 10 billion, right? And you're like, she's 10 billion. Yeah. With a B now they're making 13 billion. Like what the hell guys, yeah. you're making so much money that <laughs> you could really help out, you know, the oh, other yeah. things. Oh yeah. A lot of different things. All right, so Joe, the season's getting started. We're going to do our picks oh, in yes. just a little bit. Yes. But I before thought, we get there, what's up before we get there. I just have to say this for anybody that's tuned in for the Blitz Nation out there. If you haven't done so already, I strongly urge you to head over to YouTube at Grumblings Media. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you share it to all your friends and family that loves football talk. And we are the best interactive NFL talk show out there. I'm going to keep saying it until someone proves me wrong because they haven't done so yet. We are live, so make sure you comment down below whether it's a question that you might have about something we're talking about or not. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to dive into the conversation, give us your opinion. That's what it's all about. 
That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Jim. All right. That's a great message. I support that message. <laughs> All right, so uh, we thought it would be fun to go over uh, Vegas uh, as yeah, yeah, win yeah, totals yeah, yeah, yeah. here. We play some over under uh, I'm total sure this wins is played out here. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to look again what Vegas says and has for their numbers and the wins, and we're we're going to uh, kind of tell us everybody if we think it's uh, going to be over or under to that. So let's start right at the okay. bottom. Right, they've got who guess real quick who do they think has is at the bottom here uh, of, of uh, everybody for win total. Win total? Worst team in the NFL, they're basically saying. What do you got for win total? Man. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't know, Patriots. Boom, Patriots. Nice. Really? Very good. Yes. I right. was debating between Carolina oh, yeah. and New England. because, and, and the reason why I think maybe Vegas might put them that low is because of the uncertainty at quarterback. Because And their offensive line? Dude. The preseason game. I know it's yeah. only preseason, oh, but that was brutal. Holy to watch. cow! There's no protection up front, and if that's anything of what it's going to look like, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, yeah. That is one big pile of shit. Yeah. So what do they have for <laughs> All right, so uh, Patriots? Uh, four and a half. Over or under? I like how they throw the halves in there always. You know, they, is that funny? That's just Vegas like. You know what Vegas, I mean? Baby, that's what they do. You got to have that. So half, basically, so it's five, five wins. Five They're wins. saying five wins or less. Hmm. They still got they still got a decent defense. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say under. Under? I'm gonna say under. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's this is a tough one because again, if you're looking at five. Four is one thing, so I'm like, I don't think they get four, but five, I think five is a push. Is a push. So it's like, uh, like five is just a, like. Here's the thing: if you get four, and that's it, you you you, and you guessed over, you, yeah, you yeah. Lost. So I mean, that's what's tough because I almost think five might be the number, but uh, I think I'll say under. You said over or under? I said under. I am going to go with. And under. the Patriots will draft under. another quarterback. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> All right. Uh, who knows? Gerard uh, Mayo, who knows? They don't take any business over there. And by the way, did you see they're actually wearing the captain C's now, too? Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. All Congrats. right. So, next up, uh, we've got, um, you want to take a guess at this one? So, who's next up for the win? Next? Total? Yeah. Oh, what geez. do you think's next? Uh, and then I'll be done with that. What do you think? So, you I think was debating, I was debating with Carolina. Oh, my I'm God. Gonna go, I'm going to go. What the hell? Cash. What's up? Why would you ask me a question? I, I know, if you don't I know, care? I know, I do. What's care. going on over there? Peter doesn't care. Um, let's just go uh, with Bo Nix in, in Denver. Boom! You're two for two here. You got it right oh. there, Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, very good, Joe. I wasn't sure if we'd stump you on that. Carolina's got to be next, then. Yes, Carolina okay. is. Next too. Right. Boom! You're on a roll. All right, all right. So there you go. So um, so yeah, Patriots for four okay. and a half. Broncos are six. Five and a half. Broncos are five, five and, and a so, half. So you need, to, if you're going over, it's got to be six wins. Six. Yep. You're going under. Huh. What do you think for the Denver Broncos? Denver Broncos? Yeah. I think it's under. Yeah. I think it's borderline where the Patriots, I wouldn't be surprised, even though I oh, said under on the Patriots, maybe... I think the Patriots flip flop and they get five wins. All right. Well, how about that? Yeah. I mean, six okay. wins, six wins in. I don't think they get six wins. I think they get four. There I'm going go. under. Yeah, uh, there you go. I, I agree. Because, um, listen, it, it's the uncertainty of Bo Nix. We don't yep. know what rookie quarterbacks, because they might have all had great preseasons, you know what I mean, and, you know, preseason games and what have you, but when it comes regular season where the defenses are going to try to confuse you, it looks, they're going to try, they're going to blitz more often, they're going to come after you, like, that's when the real pressure begins. So I'm curious to see how Bo Nix and, and the Denver Broncos can handle that, but I don't think they get six wins. Right. I just looked at DraftKings prediction for the Patriots. Yeah. Nine and a half. Nine and a yeah. half wins? <laughs> no way. Not with percent. Not with percent. Oh, not with my that God. shitty offensive line. Oh, isn't that good? No what? way. Yeah. I Who's was like, smoking? Yeah, everybody else is four and a half, four and a half, and then DraftKings, nine and a half. Smoking. They wow. are smoking yeah. something serious. All right. So wait, they, when was this when was this made? I, I wonder if this just, was made recent. Just, was this made after they drafted Drake May? <laughs> I don't think I know, right? I don't think so, but I think they just updated it. I looked for the That's most recent. One. Crazy. 
Uh, all right. So next is the the um, the Panthers, and they actually are at five and a half as well. So they're basically tied with the Broncos. Um, Panthers. Yeah, I'm got. I'm going to say under. I was going to say under two as well. I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, I don't see them getting anywhere right now. So they got, yeah, I would say. So like they're still four. rebuilding. You know what I mean? They're still building around Bryce, uh, Bryce Young, and they've added a couple more younger wide receivers that still got to develop. Adam Thielen, to be honest with you, like I'm, su- I'm surprised he made the roster because mm-hmm. he he looks a little slow <laughs> last year. Um, but yeah, with, with the lack of protection last last season i don't know how much better they're going to get in that you know in that area and the defense they lost brian burns their best pass rusher since who knows julius peppers i don't know Mm -hmm. uh they don't have him anymore so like yeah i i don't think they win more than six right right i agree all right uh next up we've got the tennessee titans what yeah the Titans. yes i like the titans this year I do too, but it's kind of funny though. It's one of those teams where I like them, but that that division is so tight as I, I see them kind of being at the bottom that they could move up, but I don't think with a bad record though. You know what I mean? So Dude. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go because it's tight tough because weren't, weren't they last year? Didn't they have six wins or seven wins too? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I can look it up. up. Look it up. But um, with this one, I think um. They only got better too, so I mean, uh, they got. My, my they eyes. didn't. They didn't just get better, so, bro. They they got yeah, way better. Yeah. So I think new I coach, think new over. coaching staff. Yeah, new, new coaching, coaching staff, staff. Which I think even I've heard some headlines or what people are reading into that uh, it might be you know a rough going there. But I think it's the Titans. Uh, I like Will Levis. Um, I like so, what they did. So the Titans last year were six and eleven. Six and eleven. I think they get better. I'm gonna go with seven. So I'm taking the push. And I say seven wins here. I'm going over. I'm definitely going over. All I right. think this team's going to do so much better than people think. All right, good. All right, next up, we've got the Commanders also with six and a half. Okay. Interesting. It is interesting. Now, the Commanders, a I new, know. Yeah, new new coaching staff with Dan Quinn. Yep. New, de- new defense that is pretty aggressive. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are physical. They're aggressive. He's got a lot of new pieces yes. on that side of the ball. You know? uh and the offense is is a lot different they've added a lot of veteran offensive linemen now especially in the interior Jaden daniels their their top notch uh rookie quarterback that is starting and uh he he looked really good he made a lot of good decisions in preseason mm-hmm. and i know it's it is preseason yes uh we'll see how we, if he can continue that success in the regular season but this is a team that Oh, man, I just don't know if they can get over six and a half. You got to have seven wins. Yeah. You got to have seven then. Yeah. And that's what they're and, all at six and a half, too. They're saying. So I'm going to go with under because I think okay. I like Jaden Daniels and, and how they look at it. Yes, they've got weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like to see more. I'd like to see a first so, trial run and stuff like that to okay. say that. Plus, I, I think this division is going to get tighter this season. I think the NFC East is going to be tighter than it has in the last couple of seasons. So that's going to okay. mean a couple of losses amongst each other when they play each other. So I think, and plus they have some tough schedules moving forward, you know, this season. So to get seven wins, you know, you're talking about seven and 10 then, right? So seven and 10, Ugh, I don't know. I, I think they're more of a, I would say six is their, their season. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what I, th- I, I, I think I agree with that, but man, they, so they had they so my thing is there. because it's a it's de- a it's a turnaround team yeah like there's a lot of changes that happen offensive defensively last year they were four and thirteen mm-hmm. with that disaster of a roster um oh, man I I love Jaden Daniels I love me some Jaden Daniels I'm gonna go I'm gonna, gonna go, go over. with the over you're gonna I'm go going with the over. over all right nice I think Jaden Daniels is gonna rock it out. <laughs> There you go. Uh, all right. So next, there's a couple here. They've got at six and a half wins. Okay. Um, so next up is the Minnesota Vikings at six and a half as well. Oh, really? Okay. The highest uh, okay. is no, from FanDuel at seven and a half. Uh, but Vegas overall ranking has them at six and a half wins. Now, knowing that's what's funny is like knowing who's starting and where the team is at. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's going to be a rough go. Like you said, I, I like what the Vikings have done, but they did lose Daniel Hunter too on the in the defense on the defensive side. But they have Sam younger Darnold pass rusher now. Has 
turned the ball over and shown that. So he's, you know, there on his lonesome to kind of run the ship. You yep. do have Justin Jefferson to rely on, which is great. Like you said, Jordan Addison, you've got a great running rank game there too. Uh, so that can get you somewhere. Yeah. But I think this is, again, it's dangling out there. That half point is killing me. I'm going to go with six you. wins again. So I'm going to say the under. I'm going over. All right. Sam Darnold for president. Boom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Sam Darnold for president. You're going with the over. I All am. right. Next up, we've got the New York football giants at Ooh. six and a half as yep. well. Don't sleep on them now. I know. Don't that's what I keep hearing. Them. That's what we keep hearing. We keep hearing, and, which and, is and, odd, I think. And you know, I'm looking at the team again. I'm right. Like, what are they it's, seeing that I don't see? I mean, we just signed the <laughs> Dory Jackson again for some freaking reason. Oh, he's a good depth piece. <sighs> he's good. You got to have yeah. him play man, though. You yeah, can't yeah, have yeah, him play yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have him play man. Yeah. So if they're if they brought him in to play zone, then that's a bad signing. Yep. Uh, but anyway, like that's the thing is like it's always in the back of my mind now. Ever since we had that interview, mm -hmm. and he's and, and um, Tyler Dunn, Tyler right? Dunn yeah. was like, "Don't sleep on him." The, he goes, "I'm telling you right now, from a lot of people talking around the league, don't sleep on the Giants. They're gonna surprise people." And I'm like. How much is that surprise? Yeah, happen? yeah. What's that surprise going to be? Like, <laughs> is that surprise at like eight wins? Like, what's happening there? Right. Um, are they a five hundred team? Like that. That's my thing. Is I'm struggling yeah. with because let's just say, uh, let's see, what did the Giants have last year? What happened to this? I had it. Is it? They were six and eleven. Six and eleven. So they had six wins last year, and yeah, that was got awful. And it was got awful. So if if six and a half is that, maybe that's they're going, what they're looking at. I'm going above. Okay, I'm going above them because they have better players on yeah, this they roster. Do. They do. The offensive line has more vets up front. Uh, Evan Neal, I still don't know. Like I know the Giants are going to give him yet another opportunity to lock down that right tackle spot, and hopefully he got better. Uh, but they do have someone they could they could put in there like Jermaine Illuminor, move yeah, some offensive yeah. linemen around, but. Matt to have Matt uh, to have neighbors. Yep. Holy, this is going to be huge for them because now teams, as he catches the football, they're going to have to worry about him. Right. And that's going to take pressure off a lot of everybody else. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the running backs with, you know, uh, we talked about Singletary and how yep. if you're worried about neighbors now and Singletary leaks out to the flat and everyone forgets about Singletary and Dan Jones just drops it off to him. He runs for 15 yards. Yep. Like that's something that I can see them kind of play with. So I, I don't know. Here's my thing that I'm, I'm here's my thing that I'm very questionable about is how is this defense going to acclimate to the new scheme? Right. They, they, they have some nice pieces and everything, but I'm going to say over just because last year, if they could pull off six wins last year, that's true. I think I mean, they're going to get over six and a half. Yeah. If you look year. at it right there, six wins and now you've got Malik neighbors on offense. You got Brian Burns on defense. Uh, that's a positive. Uh, you don't have Xavier McKinney anymore, which yeah. is, is negative, but six and a half, that's tough. But you know what? If they 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 did get better, I'm going to ride with you too in this one. We're going to ride or die. I'm going with seven <laughs> wins. I'm going with over. All right. Uh, so next up, we've got your Raiders that are at six and a half too as well, Joe. Six and a half at the Raiders. Uh, Gardner Minshew, definitely under. Under. Yeah. There you go. 100%. Because here's the thing is they were eight and nine last year. And that was uh -huh. with... When Josh, when halfway through the year they axed Josh McDaniels yes. and to, um, and Tony AP took over, Antonio Pierce took over, inserted Aiden O'Connell right away as the starter, and went bananas. They right. started winning a lot more games and losing, and I think it was five and three as a quarterback, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, there's some potential here. If this kid can develop for the following year. It could look like a nice offense, but now that he's not deemed as the starter and they're going to rock with Gardner Minshew, I think that's the, a bad decision that I don't, I think it's going to be under, I think Gardner Minshew struggles. Yeah. He's I a mean, turnover this is tough, which is kind of funny because again, narrative I'm hearing so much out there is the Raiders with Aaron Pierce, you know, uh, Antonio, Antonio Pierce. I keep saying Aaron. Pierce he's a giant. Too. I, he's a giant too. Come Why on, do I keep man. screwing up his name? Antonio <laughs> Pierce. Uh, yeah. yeah. So much that everybody's high on it. It's a new look. These guys are amped up to ready. And then you're looking at me at six and a half. Uh, there it is. Dude, it's, it's low hanging fruit. No, out there no like, doubt about it. Their defense should be even better mm -hmm. than last year. Should mm -hmm. be really good, but you need an offense to complement that. And I just think that Gardner Minshew is going to more often than not make mistakes 
because we've seen it happen in preseason, him throwing picks all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, ah, that doesn't really inspire confidence. Right, right. Um, man, this is tough. I'm going to go, Do I'm going to go with under just because yeah. I'm thinking it's six. I think six is the number maybe. Uh, all right, if, next, if Gardner Minshew is there, they one. might not win. Well, I, I mean, I'm just doing <laughs> overall because if they do eventually make the switch, even. Um, all right, next, we've got the Saints at seven and a half, Joe. So here we go. Saints like are at it. seven and a half. Like Everybody it. across the board, like seven and a half. Uh, so I think this is uh, an over for me. Uh, yeah. they did well last year. I think they had seven last year, nine and nine. Eight. No, were they nine? All right, so they were they did well. So I think they could do the same thing this year and push for that division. Yeah, they're gonna um, have in my eyes, they're gonna have double digit wins. Yeah, I, I'm going over 100%. All right, next, they've got the Seahawks at seven and a half. Okay, the Sea uh, Chickens. This is tough because Seattle plays hard too a lot of times. What was their record last week? Last year, last week, uh, last zero, week zero. zero zero last week. Yeah, zero zero last oh, that's week. Good. Uh, they'll do better than that. Last year, uh, <laughs> nine and eight. Nine and eight. See, yeah. they're one of those teams, man. They're just but this is going to be there, but yeah, without you know, uh, this is going to be predicated on Geno Smith yeah. and how well he plays. To be honest with you, because you, you got know, everybody Pete else there now, though too. I mean, yeah, but that different. don't matter. I don't know. I, that might matter for an extent. A head uh, coach? Yeah, just, you know, it's because, he, he, I mean, I don't think they're going to run the same thing that he was. I mean, yes, he's involved with the uh, the team still in the organization, but I think it's going to be a little different. Well, Pete Carroll didn't run anything. He was the head coach. Yeah, he's, he's the, the one that coach, makes decisions, but, but like, he does, you know, he's not know. calling plays. I don't know. I think Seattle, this is going to be under for them. I'm going to go under. I like it. I'm going to go under, under too as well. Okay. Cool. Tom Leiter, you're welcome. Yeah. There you go. Suck it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, seven and a half. Okay. Last year, I think they were I nine like, and eight. I like over. I like the over. Last year, they Still. were nine and eight. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say under. You're going to say under? I'm going to say under. Okay. Yeah, I can see that too. You know, what I mean, they may take a step back. Um, you know, they've got a couple of different personnel out there. Uh, receivers I mean, getting older. Um, my my thing too is like Mike Evans last year was inconsistent for part of the season, not all the season, but part of the season. It was like almost like he forgot how to catch the ball. Yeah, it was like at times. Yeah, he, that's what it was he's weird. One of those guys. He's one of those guys that's got the strength. I get it. He can. He can, he'll win the jump balls, the 50 50 balls. Mm -hmm. But some of the ones that are there, right to him, open. He just says club hands for. Some but it reason. was never like that. Like just last season, it happened. Yeah. Like any other season, dudes like ironclad mitts, like crazy, yeah. like doesn't drop anything. Yeah. But last year was weird. It was fluky. Yeah. So like, and then Chris Godwin, who is healthy again but soon to be injured. Like after he goes down, like what's the alternative? Yep. You know what I mean? It's almost like it's going to be Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield. And if, if one of them get hurt, it could derail this offense. So I don't know. I, I just, I'm going to say under. Yep. Uh, all right. Um, next we got the Arizona Cardinals and they're at seven and a half. Joe. They went four and 13 without Kyler Murray. Yes. Now Kyler Murray is back yet again. Mm -hmm. Can he stay healthy for all? We talk about Deshaun Watson. This dude, <laughs> yeah, he's always injured. <laughs> yeah, well, is he gonna keep scrambling like he does? I mean, but I think he's actually best when he does stuff like that. he's actually great at avoiding hits. Mm -hmm. He's great at it. He runs out of bounds. He slides. That's not it. He injures himself, like just running. That's how it. That's how he gets injured. It's it's yep. not contact. So yep. here's the thing with the Cardinals. We we went over it when we did our yes, review on review. them. Yep, the roster overall. I think their defense looks terrible on paper. I mm -hmm. think their offense is lacking because they are st trying to rebuild that franchise. I think they should be one of the teams that are on the bottom of this. I'm going to go. I'm going to say way under. Uh, um, <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah, I, I Biden, agree. get out of here. I, I don't know why they're there too. I don't get the seven and a half. Uh, they're, they're, it's I mean, weird maybe, that they're begging us to say under. Maybe it's uh, I might a just surprise team, but I, 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 I really can't want to. see it. I can't see it. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, I, I'm saying under. Uh, next, they've got the Chargers at eight and a half. Joe, again, you've been different you team. Know, uh, you know, saying things about the Chargers and the and those could be a highly running attack. It's going to be um, heavy run for sure. You know, when you got Greg Roman hinder, as yes. your offensive coordinator, yes. formerly yes. of the Ravens, yep. which helped out Lamar Jackson's development tremendously utilizing his running game and everything. Here's the thing is now he's going to the chargers 
Justin Herbert is typically not like that. He can. He is mobile enough to where he can take off and run, but he's not like a Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. He's not a Kyler Murray. He's nothing like he's not a Josh Allen. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm curious to see how this offense is run. Is it going to be similar to how Baltimore runs their he run heavy offense? And if so, like Justin Herbert's going to capitalize on every throw. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be. But my thing is, is it's going to also limit him in terms of um, output as a quarterback because they're going to be running so much right. that they're going to try to control the clock. Like that's the Jim Harbaugh way. You control the clock, you run timeout, you score at the end of each drive. They're saying eight and a half. Is that what they're saying? Uh, yep. Eight uh, and a half for, for a team that was five and, and yep. for a team that was five and 12 last year. And let's just say, let's play devil's advocate here. Former coaching staff went for on fourth downs a lot. A lot. And and sometimes it was just stupid when they went for it. Yeah. And that could attribute it to, let, let's just say three games, three wins. They, they missed out on because of those decisions. That gets them at eight wins. Now you're going to implement this kind of like what we are assuming is going to be a run heavy offense. You're not going to look to, I don't, I just, I think that this is one of those teams like the Ravens, the Ravens got into the same situation where if they get, happen to get behind in the game and then have to play catch up, it's out of the realm of the offense that they like to run. So eight and five, I think is a, might be a little too rich for me for, especially for Jim Harbaugh returning and not knowing what to expect. And this is a team too on defense that got weaker. Mm -hmm. They're not as strong as they used to be and injury riddled like crazy. Joey Bosa got right. injured again. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not even he's the start of the season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think so, that's what position he plays. Yeah. Injured. Left bench. Yes. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say under on this one. Yes. I don't think they get uh nine wins. I think he thinks IR is a, is a position. <laughs> <laughs> Indescribable. <laughs> uh, recovery uh, yes. indescribable recovery uh, it was tough it's like when you look at the receivers again nothing really to write home about you know unless again you know brendan rice you know pops up into that spot and joshua I, palmer I did like okay him. yeah, yeah you know and lad mcconkey's there is nice but again if you're forced to throw it then mm -hmm. what do you do like yeah that's what you're kind of getting at. i trusted justin herbert so like you talked yeah, about the the, right. the baltimore ravens right and their offense all you could do is run because are you trusting lamar to push it down the field with throwing it I mean, he uh, can. You know I mean, he could guys at some open. points, but again, you, you we, the way the offense was was ran, I think it's going to be run heavy. But I think I, I like Justin Herbert there I in, do too. Uh, to be there to be the guy to throw it down. It's just uh, who's he throwing it to? So it'd be nice if one of these receivers do kind of etch out a spot and really you know, kind of be your puka nukua and, and, and come out and be that kind of star athlete right away for him. I think the guy you have to watch out for is Lad McConkey. There he's go. gonna he's gonna turn into a superstar this year. Yep. And and then, and then you mentioned Brandon Rice. Brandon mm -hmm. Rice, I really do think he can develop to be a really nice starter. Mm -hmm. So eight and a half for me. I think they're dangling it again. It's I'm close. gonna go with eight. So I'm gonna okay. say under. Yeah. I mean that uh, makes sense. It's a tough division again too. You got the Chiefs there too. So I mean I think the Chargers kind of. You got the well, Chiefs, and then they you, get. You said that right. You got you know, the Chiefs, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they always play tough each other. Everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Raiders. You don't play them tough last season. Um, all right. Next, we've got the Steelers here now at eight and a half. What do yeah, you think does, about this one? Uh, so the Steelers. This is intriguing, right? Because the Steelers are playing in that division that we were just talking about, but how competitive that is, and the parity in that division alone is insane. So. You got Russell Wilson in there. Deshaun Watson, we'll see if he stays healthy. Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. All good quarterbacks, depending on what, what time they played. Like Watson was back in Houston and what have you. But here's the thing. is for the Steelers. Now, you have what you would like to assume is improved quarterback play as your starter. You have to think that George Pickens is now going to be happy as uh, you know, a pig and shit. Mm -hmm. and like i got a legit quarterback that's going to get me the ball when i get open and we're gonna we're gonna kill it i with this tough defense i think that's the thing right here right like do i view the steelers right now as better than the other three teams in this division fully healthy like if everyone's healthy and you're comparing roster to roster and the way they play i don't think the steelers are 
even with with a better quarterback in Russell Wilson there and, and a veteran leader and all that, mm-hmm. I just they had ten wins last year, mm-hmm. which is kind of remarkable when it you think remarkable. about it. Um, but that could be attributed to their weak season last year, their their schedule last year. Mm-hmm. So when you got to when you have to p- play against these teams, like it's very possible they could they could lose and be swept by all three teams. It's possible. That's you know that's six losses there, so I, I'm gonna say that with eight and five, do I see them getting nine wins? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say under on, on that. I'm gonna say they they get like eight wins. Yeah, uh, yeah. This one is a is a tough one. It's dangling out there. Um, I could see them getting eight, but they had ten last year. Um, I think they could do just as good. Um, they've shown that they will win still, despite I keep calling for their downfall, that this is going to be the year they finish fourth in the division and it never happens. It can happen. So this year. I'm not going to get fooled this time. I'm going to say over. All right. So there you go and watch them do it. You know, that'd be great. See. All right. So next we've got the, uh, the, the Cleveland Browns at eight and a half as well. We've got a couple straight of teams all mm-hmm. at eight and a half here. Uh, the yeah. Browns eight and a half. Joe, we talked about Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. had to be one of those guys. He's got pressure to perform. Yeah. Something to prove. Mm-hmm. He's got to prove it here. This team uh, played well last year. What was their record? Did they finish at? Do you have eleven and six? Eleven and six. Even so, with that's with, without them. Yeah, I think that defense is just as good this year too. Uh, oh, that's really good. I'm gonna say go for it. I'd say an over. I, I'm gonna say over, like hands down. Go. I think they're gonna get double digit wins just like they did last year. So, and and this is the thing. But here here's what it is. Last year they had they could fall back on Joe Flacco. This year, if Watson goes down with injury, I don't think there's a good enough quarterback to fall behind. Like you got Jameis Winston as your backup right now. Yeah. Sorry, that dude is not going to win you games. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, that it could derail if Watson does happen to get injured again. This this team could be only like five wins. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go over with Watson staying healthy all year. That's what we're crossing our fingers for. Hmm. Hmm. All right, next up at eight and five, two as well. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars Ooh. and the Colts right there, too, are eight and five. So. All right, we'll talk about both of them. Then. Talk about both of them. They're both so they right both here. here's the thing is they both ended up nine and eight. Mm-hmm. They both did. And Anthony Richardson did not complete his rookie year. Right. He got injured, missed the rest of the season. So we don't really know. Maybe they could have scraped a couple wins, a couple more wins out. But Gardner Minshew came to the rescue for them. Uh, and, and got some wins for them, but he also, you know, there was some there was some games that they gave up too. Uh, but with Richardson, the, the interesting thing is he's so dynamic. He's much like a Lamar Jackson, where he's a big imposing figure. But man, can he is he mobile? Can he rush and make people miss? And he's so so big and strong. And he, I shouldn't say he's like Lamar. Physically, he's he's not. But mobile wise, he has that burst and in, in the the suddenness to him. But this year, like I, I'm really intrigued to see, did he get any better as a passer? Because that's the thing is he's mm-hmm. Lamar's got him beat like crazy in terms of being a, a quarterback and, and a passer of of the ball. Anthony Richardson, that was his big struggle last year. So, and he looked like he started to add some spadaz to that yeah, team spadazz, before like it, Joe. he got hurt. So I'd like to think that maybe with Richardson in there healthy all year, maybe make some pl- uh, gimmicky plays, if you will. I think they might be able to get a couple more wins. So I'm going to go with the Colts over. Mm-hmm. And with the Jaguars, I'm not really high on the Jaguars this year, other than their defense. I'm not impressed by Trevor Lawrence, and I still don't think he's deserving of the contract that he got. So I still think the Jaguars are going to be a good football team. but. I'm going to say that they're going to be under on this. I think they're only going to get about eight or seven wins. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at both these two and I'm going to go kind of flip side. Um, I think the Colts, I think they're both going to be over again. I'm looking the nine, nine and eights. Uh, but I think the Jags, again, I call them to kind of step up this year. So I'm thinking they're going to get to the 10 win uh, and be, you know, second in this division again. Uh, and make a push. I think they try and turn it around here. I like the defense, like you said. I like the w- weapons that they have better than they did last year. Um, and Trevor Lawrence, I still believe in him because he was playing banged up still. And if you look at his numbers, he didn't do poorly, I don't think, last year. Um, so I think he, I, I 
don't think he's deserving though of the contract that you're no. talking about though either. Uh, but he also, I mean, that's breath, the thing. But I think he's definitely competent to be your your starting quarterback, and he can get them places. He's competent, and we've, and we've seen them do it before. And it's Doug Peterson, I think they could do it again. He's competent, but the problem was is last year, like he let them down down the stretch. He he had turnovers in critical game points where it led them to a loss instead of a win. Because honestly, like they they had the division last year. They're the ones that felt that fell, you know, fell back. And I understand they didn't have Travis at the end until like uh, later in the season because he got banged up too and he missed some time. Mm -hmm. But it was just like it's one of those things where it seems like they keep adding a different player every offseason, a veteran, like whether it be receiver, whatever. Calvin Ridley left. He went to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Now they installed Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis to me is he's not a, 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 big time deep threat but you got christian kirk who's kind of more of that that slot guy and i just don't think they have that guy besides maybe the rookie brian thomas jr mm -hmm. that's what i'm, I'm waiting yep. to see how he develops we'll see how the fence goes yep all right next up here we're getting a little over halfway with this list now here let's uh try and roll through this uh nine and a half we've got a couple of teams right in a row, like five or six teams here. Oh, actually, there's like eight. Holy crap. All right. There's a bunch of them here. Let's start it off with the Falcons, though. The Falcons are at nine and uh, nine and a half. Um, again, I think they're going to do well this year, you know, better than last year. Very well. Um, 10 wins. This division. You got, so you push, you got the Saints still, and you've got the the, the Bucks. It's going to be tough. I'm, I'm going saying over. they get nine. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go at nine wins. I'm going over. They got Kirk Cousins. They finally right. got a quarterback that can get give it to these young wide receivers. They have a good O line. Their defense is much improved now, um, and it was already good last year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I give it. Give me. Give me ten. Give me eleven. Give me twelve wins. Go. Okay, let's do All it. Right, next, we've got the um, the Rams, the Los Angeles Rams. Rams at nine and a half. I'm going to say over. I'm going to say over. They were ten and seven mm -hmm. last year. Matt Stafford and company coming back healthy. Yep. This young defense that they have looks really, really good. They're going to take another big leap, and with their their two new uh, rushers on the D line, so I like it. Let's go. All right, Cowboys here at nine and five, nine and a half too as well. Um, I say they get ten wins, so I'm going to go over. This is here's my thing. Do the if they get this Dak thing figured out, like I wonder how much that's going to play into the season where. If Dak, like Dak said, it's not going to bother him. He's going to play no matter what. They're still going to work on it and all this. If he can keep a clear head, then th this offense is going to be just fine. They got CD Lamb back in there. Yeah. And uh, my one downfall, your running backs. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott is your starter. Like, I'm sorry, guy's aging. The guy can barely move, uh, you know, the, the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's going to come into more of, of a play this season for them, not being able to get those critical rushing yards. Right. It might make them one dimensional where teams only can concentrate on the pass. Uh, even though they had, was it 11 and six is what their, their mm -hmm. record was last year. They don't have Deron Bland. Nope. So you know what? Screw it. Cowboys fans hate me. If you want, you're going, <laughs> you're under. going under. Oh man. <laughs> Oh boy. Eight All wins. Right. Eight wins. Yikes. All right. Next we've got the Miami Dolphins at nine and a half as well. I'm gonna say over. Right there. I like right it. Nine and over. a half. Boom. I think I'm gonna go over with Miami too. I yeah. think they get double digit wins. They're gonna be competing for this division. Mm -hmm. This, this yes. is another division that's gonna be yeah. so tight at the end of the season where who knows who's gonna come out on top. Could could be the Jets, could be the Dolphins, could be the Bills. I'm gonna come. It's not gonna be the Patriots. There you go. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, the Texans at nine and a half too. Vegas over. has nine and a half. I'm saying over, over as well. Saying over, baby. Boom. They're all going right. over to the moon and back. Yep. All right. So all these, I think they're they're up there. These are your top contenders here. Uh, Packers nine and nine and a half. I'm going to say over attack. as well. I'm saying over as well. Nine and a half. That's yeah. all they're giving them. Yeah. Really. Nine and a half. That's what I mean. These ones are kind of easy pickings, I think, for Dude, me right here. I mean, they went nine and eight last year. Yeah. So I get where they're coming from, but this is a team that is not just young, but now they've already have a full season under their belt all together. Yeah. And, and I look for them Josh to Josh Jacobs too. Like, I mean, Dude, I don't know. I don't think they got worse. I think so, I, I mean, think it gets on. better, right? Yeah. It, it, I mean Xavier it, McKinney now at safety too. I mean, like, come on, bro. Uh, yeah, I I'm going I'm worse. going over. I'm going over yes. Packers. Yes. All right. Next they've got the Bears. 
Now I don't Bears agree. or Bills. Nine and a half. The oh the Bills. Yep, yeah, sorry. The Bills, then the Bears. I'm jumping ahead gun. So the Bills, uh nine and a half. Uh I say, yeah, I say they're in this. They're, they're contending for the division again because who else are they contending against? You know, they've got the Jets and the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the, um, you know, the Dolphins, Jets but Dolphins. you know, you know, it's not the, uh, the Patriots. So I, nine and a half, I give them that. I give them 10 wins and plus, yeah. What do you think? Hmm. This is, he, this you think is, Stefan Diggs is going to make that much of a difference if not being there? Or what do you think it is? You think it's defense? It's too, definitely going to make it, a difference. Okay. Like it's going to make a difference offensively because you no longer have that, um, Elite talent at wide receiver. You got a guy who's up and coming in Khalil Shakir. You got a, a rookie in Keon Coleman, but Keon Coleman is not the same receiver like that. Like he has, he has to build up speed. It's not sudden. So I'm, I'm not really sure how well he's going to do in terms of separation. Is that going to make Josh Allen second guess throwing the football to, to a guy like Keon where I, I feel like Khalil Shakir, I feel like is going to get a lot of catches. I think he's going to be like the underrated kind of weapon that that Josh is going to rely on, along with guys like Dalton Kincaid, Dalton Kincaid. and what have you. But yeah. man, I, I tell you right now that there's that part of it, and then on the defensive side, they are weaker on defense. They, again, Matt uh, Milano is not going to be available. Yeah. Their captain, yep. Yep. they are going to struggle at times. I I didn't notice much of a pass rush, in in pre, and I understand it's preseason whatever, but. Their DNs that they have, I got concerns about. Mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. they're that good. Mm -hmm. So, and they've lost the tackles over the last couple of years to free agency. I, I don't know, man. I, I, they have Ed Oliver still, but he can't do it all by himself. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, I'm going to say they have nine wins. I think okay. under, under. All right. Uh, next, we've got the Chicago Bears now at nine and a half. The Bears. I'm going to say under. Uh, again, Abraham rookie Fluss, quarterback. Yeah, and again, looking back at this team again, uh, they haven't had nine wins since 2018. Um, so just I don't think Cale Williams and the, some of the additions that they made, I guess, are good. Yes, I get that, but I don't think it's going to be that quick of a turnaround. Uh, I really think they're going to win two more games. And it's going to be nine wins. And it's not going to be 10 and over. Okay. So yeah, because I mean, that's that's their ceiling. I'm thinking even too. So they definitely improved that whole roster. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. it's probably the best situation a rookie quarterback could go into. Right. I mean, your offensive line's pretty much solid. Mm -hmm. Your your weapons are amazing, mm -hmm. and then you also have DeAndre Swift as a running back. So they were seven and ten last year. Although I think the best quarterback they have is not the one starting. I think Tyson Badgett is better than Ch uh, Mr. Williams there. Right now, Williams can be what Williams can be, uh, but it's going to take some time. I don't think we're going to we see him scramble. Right, preseason was like a thing where like he's like, oh, he's doing the same thing he did in USC. Yeah, sure, but wait until these defenses now are going to be locked in on him. What is his, what are his tendencies? Is he going to always look to the number one his first read? You know what I mean? It's like he did in in college. So I think it's going to be under. I I think that it might even be six or seven wins i just don't see a rookie quarterback coming in and even though he's got great weapons and all that i just i just don't know man i i think he was a risky pick when he was taken and we'll see what happens i guess yeah all right next we've got the lions at 10 and a half now so they're bringing Ooh, into that now we're getting tough. Line. here we go now we're getting lions tough. 10 and a half so 11 wins um in that division you got the Packers there. Yep. Uh, yep. Bears. Yep. I said they are not going to get. They're going to get maybe nine wins. You got the Vikings. Uh, Vikings. I don't think are going to be as good there. I think I had the under. So I'm going to go Lions. Yeah. 11, 11 wins at least. Yeah. They're going like, to match like last over. year. They're going like to match it. last yeah. year. They're going yeah. twelve and five. They're going. There you over. go. I like it. I like it. Match them the next last year. Perfect. All right. Next, we've got the uh, the Ravens at 10, 10 and a half as well. Tough one. Yeah. Very um, tough one. They went 13 and four last 13, year. Four last year. And their defense got better. Yeah. I think they run it back again. I mean, they're a tough team to beat. They, they just got a, They're one of those teams, though. They're like, physical. you know, like I said, the, the, the pressure isn't on Lamar Jackson, you know, to prove anything, but they really need to get to the, the playoffs and kind of beat their nemesis of the Chiefs and things like that and kind of get there. I would They have the team I mean, to do it. Yeah, they definitely do. And they, and they should have won last year. Yeah. Let, let's just yeah, they Lamar. It. There's so many squads. Lamar, yeah. Lamar Jackson. Run, Lamar, run. Yeah, like, run. that's what he needs to do. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Don't worry about the critics and say, oh, you're you're just a runner. Who cares? Just win. Anyway, yeah, I got <laughs> I got the Ravens going over. Easy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You're yep. going to hear that from the stands. There you go. I like it too. Yeah, as long as he runs. Uh, all right, next we've got the, the Bengals at 11. The Bungles. Um, I'm going to go under on this one. Oh, you're going I'm under? I'm going huh? under. I'm going okay. under. I'm saying 10 wins. Well, they were 9-8 and eight without Joe Burrow. Yes. Uh, with it. Joe Burrow, they're definitely going to have double-digit wins. I'm going over. I'm going under. All right, here we go. Next, we've got the Eagles. Eagles, I said th- I said this is going to be a tougher division. I don't think the Eagles this year are going to still fly away with this one, even though they did get a lot of good weapons, though, still, and, uh, you know, added more talent to this team. Man, do they have 14? Man, man maybe they do. <laughs> this is going to be tough. <laughs> Because I think, again, they're going to be better than the Cowboys. So I guess I will. All right, I'll go with the overseas. At 10 and a half, I'll give them that extra half. Right, 100% I'm going over. over. They got a lot of the – they got some uh, vets that returned right back back to the team that were amazing with the Eagles, and they just built that up more, even more. What – I don't know how they won the draft like they always mm-hmm. – they do it every year. Yeah. I just don't get – do teams just say, hey, listen, we're going to let you win the draft every season, so we'll just let whatever player you want slide right to you. But somehow the Eagles get their guy. So uh, they got some young, youth, youthful defensive backs that I can't wait to see what they can do this year. And overall, like that team should be 11, 12 wins all day long. Yep. All right. So this is a funny team here now. Oh, In the top I three, uh, the New York Jets at 10 and a mm. half here, Joe. Vegas odds. We're looking at the total wins. Mm. Um, they have them at 10 and a half. Are they digging this out here for those Jets fans? Uh, the lowest one is by DraftKings and FanDuel, who say nine and a half. Yeah. Um, so either way, th- but either here's way, my they're thing. saying ten plus. Vegas one. is talking they're, they're, yeah. and basically telling you guys that the Jets are going to be really good. Yeah. Now we have to wait and see. Yeah, we have but to wait and see. They still have to play the we, games, and Aaron Rodgers listen, needs to make it past we, four plays. We already yeah. know that the defense is going to be stud. Yes, they're, they're all yeah. they're all studs. Yeah. They're dogs. Yeah. Like that defense is going to be top five easy. Yes. What we don't know is how good is this offense going to be with Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to bet on Rodgers staying healthy, and I'm going to take the over on this. Yeah. I think the Jets are going to the, – the Jets, I really do believe, could push for this division. I think the so. Jets can too. Uh, in my best quarterbacks for this upcoming season, I think I had Aaron Rodgers here at number one, so I'm really pushing for him to do something here and come back to that and, and, and do it with this younger team with this great defense. Cause again, we'd seen these different quarterbacks who kind of, like we said, rely on that defense. If you're mm-hmm. able to be that guy, you were, I think this is the perfect situation for Aaron Rodgers. Great defense. Keep it a low scoring game for you. Possibly mm-hmm. get the turnovers. And then you get, you got Brees Dude. Hall that can run the ball, you know what Dude. I mean? And just air it out <laughs> to these young receivers. I like it. I like it all day. It's a perfect situation. Oh, it's going to be amazing. So I'm going to go with the over too. I'm like it. I'm feeling it. All right. All right last like two, it. we've got the, uh, the chiefs and the 49ers, both at 11 Ooh. and a half. Joe. They're the cream of the crop. They Ooh. rise to the top. I never eat the pig because the pig is the cop. Well, you the- keep going, but I mean, that's such a great song. Jump around by house of pain. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got the 49ers the chiefs so 11 and a half ah, dude all right it could be the, bad for the 49ers though because i feel like some of those guys injuries could be really set this team off in a bad situation well you could say that about the chiefs i too. know i get it i, get I mean it. but what i'll say is like as far as the chiefs go they did only have 11 wins last year mm-hmm. they are the, the, you know as well as i do this whole league is getting better mm-hmm. The teams that are below them that have been below them for years in terms of the division, they're all starting to get a little bit better. They're starting like I would say the Raiders probably have the next best defense in this division. And then you have like I would I I could debate Broncos have a better defense than the Chargers do, even though they got a lot more names. Um, But offensively, you know, that's where the scales tip. That's where the Chiefs kind of are favored in that. But finishing 11 and six. And what they've been able to accomplish with after Tyree kill leaving and still finding a way to work the offense, a certain way to fit the personnel they had, they didn't try to force anything to happen. They just said, okay, we're going to alter the offense a little bit because it'll fit better. And they've done a, a miraculous job. Andy Reed is to me. I don't know how anybody can criticize Andy Reed. The guy to me is like one of the, the best, not only head coaches, but one of the best offensive minds I have ever seen. 
So with that all being said, <laughs> I have to say that I don't think uh, this is the year for the Chiefs. Okay. I think that defensively, without Legereus Sneed, who I think was a key cog in that, that secondary, I, I really do think that the Chiefs are going to lose a couple more games than people anticipate. And I, and I, and I think that they're going to be under 11 and a half. All right. Uh, hmm, it's going to be tough. I'm going to say they're going to be at 11 again. So yeah, I'm saying under uh, 49ers. I'm going to go with over. Yeah. Niners. I'm going to definitely go over, over because it's, it's hard not to yeah. the team that they have. And the fact that everybody is back, everybody's happy. Now we got the contracts done. Yeah, they, they're definitely going to be over. They'll definitely be right back in the dance. All right, Joe. So there you go. There's I like the, it. The Vegas odds. Good uh, job. I thought that was fun to go through that. It got us Everybody, some thanks for going. playing. Yeah, there you go. And I got another game for you guys. It's really easy. You just head over to YouTube. There's this place called Grumblings Media. And then you just hit a, a button. It's called a subscribe button. Oh, yeah. There's also like a like button there. You make sure you hit that. Make sure you share it to everybody you know. And then don't forget to comment down below because we are live, guys. We This is the best damn NFL talk interactive show you I'm can get. I'm when I'm playing. So make sure you drop the comments down below. We do react to everything during the show. And make sure you all tune in next week when we come back. You like that? You like that? <laughs> all right, Her here we go. Her like cousin likes it. Cousin likes it. All right, here we go. So we're going to go through our picks, Joe. Here we go. It's week one. Oh, picks are coming. Picks. We got a game Thursday night. September 5th, Kansas City Chiefs at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Who you got in this one? I got the Ravens. I think the Ravens are going to upset the Chiefs. Like like Detroit last year, mm. they had the Chiefs, yeah. man. They just had them. Yep. And they almost pulled off a surprise win. I think the Ravens actually get it done. Ravens are definitely a more physical team. And the Chiefs struggle with physical teams. Yeah. So I, I, I really do like the Ravens this year. I think they're going to win a lot of games. So I think that they started off here. I agree. Uh, I think they're struggling at wide receiver right now too. So I don't think you know that's going to be an issue. I think that's going to be an issue for the, the for the uh, Chiefs. And again, like you said, you saw what happened with the Detroit. They're vulnerable. It's the first game of the season. I don't think they're going to be you know you know amped up to get and go for it. I think they're, they're not ready. They're not ready. Uh, so even though it is in the kingdom. Uh, we're going to go next now to Friday. We have a Friday yeah, night Friday game. That's night gonna, football. Uh, well, that's going to be yes, a Friday night, but Brazil. it's going to be played in Brazil to where we've heard different stories about this whole Brazil thing because uh, we know gang, the gang. NFL has been trying to spread it out internationally wide, you know, with these games and certain uh, teams are mm. allowed to promote in different countries. Um, we've heard that it's very unsafe to be around the city and outside, you know, uh, like it. in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, Darius Slay just came out and said things, too, about he's not he really doesn't want to go. Doesn't want to be there. Doesn't uh, NFL go. told him not to go out. I've heard people from brazil to say hey it's overblown it's fine no don't uh, trust. <laughs> it, it's between the two rival uh, soccer league teams that you know have similar colors yeah. to another gang or something yeah. like that so yeah. it's overblown uh i know i would still listen to it though just to be safe like you, you can only be safe inside Dude, so why just what stay do you, inside yeah but, what, what do you need to, uh, like honestly like what, but, why would you yeah. go out on the town knowing that you could be risking one maybe your life or two like risking something to happen to you Right, you know, and it's funny that Slay says this about the uh the the league is saying, hey, why would you put our players in danger like this to do this? Like, mm -hmm. Well, the NFL wants to keep spreading the word. Oh, they don't care. Know, their reach, they don't care. They don't care. They're like they want they want to be everywhere. So what does that matter to you? You know, they just said, hey, stay inside, be safe. You know what I mean? It's so, uh, so this should be interesting. I'm interested to see how the uh mm. arena is going to be there. You know, Ooh. the stadium, how a rocking that might be. Um, here's a, here's but, a, yeah, dude, it's going to be nuts. Like yes. it really is going to be insane. And, yeah. I, and I'm curious, like, is it going to be more Packer fans? I think it's going to be, you're going to see a lot of green and gold. I think so. Okay. I think you see the, the Eagles the got popular quick too. So I hear you. I, I wonder if it, or did they like, I wonder if, cause I know some teams do this, like they only offer uh private tickets, like to, to people that follow the team or whatever, locally, whatever they get first dibs. And then they sell to the the visiting team or whatever. So like whoever like Packers or whatever get like you know, a certain amount of tickets or whatever to sell. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the the ratio 
of like Packers to Eagles fans yeah. in this one in Brazil. It'll be it'll be cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough one. And just because again, even though it's a uh Phillies, the home team, they're not in Philly, they're in Brazil. I'm gonna go with the Green Bay Packers in this one. All right, I'm gonna go with the Philadelphia Eagles because fly Eagles fly. Yeah. By the way, if people don't know, we do have another football show, Football on the Know. And uh, I do terrible week one always, too, whenever we do our picks. So we'll see how this goes. This it's week all right. It doesn't first. matter. See if we can turn a new leaf. It doesn't um, matter. You come back and win in the end that's anyway. That's right. We'll see. All right. So now Sunday, which is my birthday. Uh, you guys, if you Oh, you got to get this right. It's my birthday. So <laughs> all of these you're supposed to get right. There's a lot of games here. So it's going to be very exciting. I get to see uh, my team play with their old school jerseys which kind of are a mixed hodgepodge looking thing you know what but i'm a michigan fan though too so i get to see the winged helmet in blue and red so that'll be interesting to see yeah. and uh i'm excited for this upcoming season but you should a lot be. of games right here so let's go through sunday september 8th my birthday the pittsburgh steelers and the atlanta falcons the atlanta falcons at home Ooh. I think I like that. Atlanta plays tough at home. I'm going to go with Atlanta at home against Pittsburgh, even though the Pittsburgh defense I think is better. Uh, I like Kirk Cousins. Let's do it. Let's go. I with like the, the Falcons. I like the Falcons and their defense better. There you go. So you're going Falcons. Yeah. 100%. All right. Arizona Cardinals and the Buffalo Bills. Circle the wagons. I like the Buffalo Bills here at home against the Arizona putrid Cardinals. Putrid Cardinals. Putrid Cardinals. Which I don't get how they're saying nine and a half. They said. Dude, there's no way. Bills open up in a big way in this one. They trounce the Cardinals. Here we go. Uh, the Tennessee Titans and the Chicago Bears. Chicago at home. I really like the Titans, what they're doing. Chicago, I don't know. Chicago. Do go they bang, get the bang. win at home, though? That's tough. Uh, oh, man. You know what? I'll give the benefit at home. They do play tougher at home. I'll give it to Chicago. But I would like to see Tennessee win. I'm going to have a surprise win here. The Titans the end Titans. up starting off their season with a win over Caleb Williams. I would like it. I would like it. All right, here we go. The the uh, the New England Patriots and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a trap game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. This is because the way the, the, the Bengals start off, man. I'm telling you. This is where Jacoby Brissett is going to be the starter anyways. You know he's injured. Uh, and his own team did that to him by not blocking at all whatsoever. Uh, well, uh, to be fair, yeah. Brissett's been playing like yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah. All he has been, been playing like shitty. So uh, this is going to lead way though to to possibly Drake Drake May coming in sooner than we think. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, I like it at home. Are gonna, they going to do the whiteouts? If they do, I think they really play well. But I'm liking the Cincinnati Bengals at home. But like I said, they get off to those lethargic starts. It kind of scares me. Usually sometimes. they do the whiteouts like for Thursday night games uh, or something like, or a special occasion, special like maybe occasion. Monday night or something like that. But mm -hmm. the, the Bengals at home, this is where they started off. They're going to get the win. All right, here we go. The Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Ooh, interdivision game. It's going to be, everybody's going to like to see this. Because again, like you said, gonna be fun Richardson to watch. together now with Stroud on the other side. This mm -hmm. is the quarterback battle. They're gonna they're gonna duke it out here. You've got two great <laughs> running backs too. You have multiple running backs here that can play well here on either side of the ball. Um, it's gonna be exciting. Indy, I, I like at home, but I'm gonna go with the um the Houston Texans on this one. You have to go with the Texans on this one. Like th yeah. that's the logical pick here. Like, come on, when you look at this offense that they've put together now with Diggs, mm -hmm. Nico Yo, Collins, too scary, Tank right? Dell. Dalton Schultz, a tight end. Oh, by the way, their backfield, you know, Joe Mixon. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> uh, saying. Yeah, that, Damian, yeah. Pierce, Damian Pierce. Like, like, and C.J. Stroud is head and tails way better than, than Anthony Richardson will probably ever be. Uh, but we'd like to hope, hope that maybe he could develop to be at least a good starter. Uh, but yeah, Texans defense and all, it's hands down. They, they have to win this game. It, I'll tell you this right now. If the Colts end up upsetting the Texans, it's going to stir the pot in the NFL. It, will. it absolutely will. Next, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins. I like the Dolphins here to take it at home. Yeah, the, the Jaguars start off in grand fashion and get an 0-1 start. Uh, I'm going with the Dolphins here as well. Tua and company, that, that offense is just going to be insane. Mm -hmm. Scary. All right, the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Panthers again got a lot of fixing to do. You got a lot of explaining to do, Lucy. They ain't gonna get it done here against the New Orleans Saints, Derek Carr and company. I like the Saints. Yeah, you really have like th this. This Saints defense is really good, especially when you got Marshawn Lattimore returning. Like that guy missed s significant playing time last mm -hmm. year. He's coming back. They got some younger pieces in involved in this. Uh, Curtis Granderson, one of the most mm -hmm. underrated pass rushers in this game. And then their offense, I feel like, is going to take a huge step forward. 
Saints are going to pour it on to Carolina. Uh, Saints win. All right, the Minnesota Vikings and the New York Football Giants. Now, this Ooh, is spicy. This is a good one. Because, again, Sam Darnold, Ooh. what is he going to do here? Oh, Luckily, again, man. he just keeps hold, handing the ball off, but then getting it to Justin Jefferson, his uh -huh. number one target. Yeah, yep. Malik Neighbors on the opposite Ooh. side, though, too. Uh, I'm hoping Danny Dimes can shine here. Brian Dable's yeah, offense, right? him at the helm. Right. I hate to do this because if you guys ever watch our other show, <laughs> we know that I bet against my team so then I can win. Uh, and that's so the way it would win. go. So that's what happens every time I bet against them, they won. So I would go with it. Yeah. But I think out of all the games this season, at least looking at this one, I'm very confident that this is a game that the Giants really can win. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go for it. I'm okay. going to go all in. Here I go. It's I week one, me. Joe. I don't give a shit. Here we go. It's week one. We can just start all over next week. That's right. Uh, I'm not hating I'm going, on it. I'm going with the Giants at home. I'm not, not hating on the, it. The uh, Minnesota Vikings. Why not, right? Just go for it. And I'm going to stick by what I said. I'm going with Sam Darnold and the Vikings. Oh, They're going to get man. their first win here. There we go. All right. We got the Vegas Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers at home, Joe. But are they home? Said, are they home? Does are it they really home? matter? No, they're not. I know. I know you, uh, your Raiders fans are thirsty here on this one. They're, They'll they're be smelling there. Smelling blood. But last year, your, your defense was like 21st against the run. You know, they're going to run heavy mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. uh, with the Chargers. What do you think? Uh, this is what I think. They swept them last year, but they're not going to sweep them this year. Uh, I, I really don't have any confidence in Gardner Minshew. I do have confidence in our defense, but I got, I got to say, like, I think he's going to end up throwing a couple picks in this game and that's going to kind of be the deciding factor. I think the chargers are going to capitalize on it. They're going to run the clock out, uh, have probably win by two scores. Maybe it's like 24, 14, uh, will probably be somewhere. Cause it's usually always low, low scoring. It's not that high yeah. whenever the, the, the rivals face here. I think the Chargers edge him out just because Gardner is going to make those mistakes. Yeah, I like the Chargers here at home. Jim Harbaugh to get his first win, and um, it's going to look pretty good here for them. The Vegas Raiders, I'm intrigued to see what happens with Devontae Adams throughout the season. If you do start doing this juggling here with the with quarterbacks, how frustrated no juggling. does he get? There's no juggling. Oh, yeah. It's either you're going to bench Gardner and then start Aiden for the rest of the year, or you're just going to stick with Gardner. Which is something that they probably should have done already. So yeah, we agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why restart? Bad again? decision. Just put him back in. Just that a bad decision. That makes no sense. Um, all right. Next, we got the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle at Ooh. home. We always say is tough. Twelfth man. Always. And I'm not high on the Broncos at all. I'm not high on Bo Nix at all. So I'm going to go with the Seattle Seahawks at home. The twelfth man. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 defense for the Seattle is is just so it's so on the on the roster like on paper it looks so impressive, and if they can capitalize on some of the plays like they did last year, Geno Smith, it's up to you in this game. Like you have to win this game. You're going up against Bo Nix and a Broncos team that really isn't that good. They're still trying to figure out their way. So I'm going Seattle all the way. All right, I've got a lot of home games here, home wins. I like it. Uh, keep next it, we keep got it the, home, baby. Keep here we go. We got the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns. Ooh, that's Browns a good one. Browns are at home. This is a tough one. That's a tough one. It is. So I'm in, interested to see. I would like to see the Desha Deshaun Watson of old because I would like to see these guys run that offense Dude, really well. Dude, could we see an um, epic performance by both Dak and Deshaun in mm -hmm. this game? Yeah. Could this, like, I could this I be want, a shootout? That's what I want to see. But I, I don't see it being Amari a shootout Cooper against this old team, too. Yeah, you got you know all these I mean? storylines right for this one. And it, but my defense. thing is the Browns defense trumps mm -hmm. the Cowboys defense. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be the thing is like, can Ezekiel Elliott carve out any yards? Does, does the Cowboys become one dimensional because they can't run the ball? And, and then does that lead to a turnover or what? So, yeah, dude, I don't know, man. I'm going to go with Cleveland on this one because. I'm I'm really feeling that Browns defense. Right. I think I'm going to go with Cleveland too as well. Um because I think they can still even get it done on the ground game too despite having not having Nick Chubb even. Dude, so they I got Jerome they Ford. Get, yeah, exactly. Jerome so. Ford did, a, had a great year last year when he was given the opportunity. So I look for yeah. him to continue that success. All right. We've got the Washington Commanders and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. Bucks at home. Ooh, this is a good one, too. I think this is going to be a very close game. But I think uh, for me, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to edge it. I'm going to go with the home team again. Ah, man. I'm going with my boy, Jaden Daniels. He's going to go. He's going to get his first rookie win here against Tampa. 
Baker Mayfield's going to be pissed, throw his helmet, hit his own head coach. Perhaps. It's going to be amazing. Todd Bowles Tune had that in. same weird look, you know, with the angry yes. face. <laughs> Not know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, and the Los Angeles Rams and the Detroit Lions. This is a very exciting game. Sunday night, 820 under the big lights. Yeah. Yep. Look at the Lions get these uh, primetime games. Well, now, that's what I happens like when you win, right? Isn't that's what happens great? when you win. When you start winning games, you get primetime right. spots. And they saw what this was like in the playoffs, too, and what kind of emotion that generated, too. Yeah. The, 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 the Lions Ooh, and the Rams. Jared Goff, you know, yeah, hey, right? you're not good enough. Yep. Matthew yep. Stafford, there you go. And here you go. It's a repeat Dude. again. Detroit this at home, the place is going to be rocking. I'm excited. I like yeah. the Rams, but I'm going with Detroit on this one, man. I'm Dude, feeling this is it. Tough, man. Ah, oh, man. And I heard they're going to do like their Motor City uh, 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 jerseys too. The bl black with the weird blue. They oh, have the, that's the terrible. Blue. I think oh, they're going to do the crazy gross. jerseys that night. Stop doing stupid shit. <laughs> anyway, um, what do you got? I think Rams, <sighs> Lions. Oh, I don't want to pick against either one of them. Be honest. I, I tell I like, you, I've picked every like home. Game I, like, I, I like them both, but man, <laughs> oh, this is a tough one because I like the Lions defense. I like what they they added their corner that they've been missing for quite some time. Um, hopefully he pans out right. Uh, but did they do enough on that defense though, man? And then the Rams, like to have Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua back again. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I you know screw it. I'm gonna go with home team. I'll go with Detroit. Yeah, there you go. It's this week one. Just live a little, right? Uh, right. All right, here well, we look go. Look at the next one. The next one. The last one of the week. This is gonna be the test then. Like, Monday so night football for me. Yes, Ooh. this will be the litmus test for the Jets. How good are you, right? Because <laughs> you got to go against the national, uh, <clears throat> you know, football leagues, uh, the N NFC champion last yeah. year. This is who you got to beat. Monday Night Football, the first game of the season. Oh, Aaron Rodgers under the lights. How good are you guys? That's amazing. Is it going to be competitive? Dude, yes, it is. Is it going to – are they going to be able to win in San Francisco, which San Francisco's record at home was outrageous last season? Will Dre Greenlaw injure himself again during a celebration? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I know. That was brutal watching that in that game. Don't even get me started again. I can't believe that happened, oh, honestly. You knew that was like the downturn, too, of everything yep. starting to fall apart, too. Dude, like, are you serious, bro? The, the, <laughs> this is what happens. All, all, all of the emotion got sucked out of that team yeah. after that. Yep, yep. But here we go. The Jets, 49ers. Like I said, it's tough to bet against the 49ers at home. This is the litmus test. So right. I'm going to go with the 49ers because, again, Makes they're sense. favorites at home. You yeah. got to be there. But I'm excited to see what the Jets can do. And if they pull out a win, Dude. then I think they're for real. Bro. I mean, you can't base it off of one game. No, I hear but you. But, I mean, again, if you're going to beat, you know, the remaining, you know, NFC champion of last year, that's 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 something. To I mean, it's something. not hard because Kyle Shannon will just keep throwing the ball and then it'll be a pick six by Sauce Gardner at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, you know, you know yeah, I mean? maybe Robert Sala knows the deal, though. He knows Kyle and, Shanahan. You know what I mean? Like, I think this game is going to be closer than people anticipate. I hope so. Because of Rodgers. Because he's that damn good of, of a quarterback, he's going to keep this team in, in the hunt. So even though I think it's going to be semi-close, I still think the Niners pull out the win. They're too good not to. Like, and this is good. And, and this will be a good precursor to AFC versus NFC. You know, which side wins this one? Like, it, will AFC come out on top on this one in, in a surprise? Or will the NFC say, hey, no, not so fast. We're still legit. Yeah, that's right. All right, there you go. There's the picks for this first week. Uh, NFL I can't season wait. has uh, come upon us now, Joe. We're super Sit. excited. Oh, so uh, awesome. Once again, thank Love you it. so much, everybody, for joining us thank tonight. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank make you. sure you guys like and share the video. Joe, tell them one more time in case they didn't hear it. Or if you're just joining us for some reason right now and you're <laughs> wicked late, you just like to show up to the party late. That's right. Tell them again how they can find us first, and other great programs just like ours here. Grimble's first Media. of all, I just have to say you're way too late because we're about to just sign we're off. Closing, but they, uh, like but thanks for showing up. Uh, make sure you subscribe on YouTube for us on Grumblings Media. Also, you can check out our great website that we have, grum grumblingsmedia.com. 
You can check out all the political, entertainment, and sports podcasts that we have available. Also, head over to rumble.com. And anywhere you get your podcasts, that's right. Apple, Google, Spotify, and Pandora, it's all there. But if you since you missed and you're just tuning in now, head over till next week. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait for our faces to show up again. But uh, uh, next Tuesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, good idea. be here. Tell them the time to be here. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next. Hey, everybody. This is Big John from Grumblings Media. And I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here. Totally free. Or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.